All right, Dave, thank you very much, and welcome to Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock. ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com, undefeated and 12th-ranked Oklahoma State, looking to run to 8-0 against Texas Tech at 5-3, and 2-3 and in the Big 12, and they are seeking bowl eligibility. I'm Dave Lamont. Joined upstairs by Ray Bentley, Don Davenport on the sidelines. That is not Dawn. <laughs> but you know what? It is Halloween, and it's a big time in Lubbock for the students and for the residents to enjoy an absolutely beautiful 70 degree day here in Lubbock Texas Tech to get the football first Jakeem Grant will take a knee and will start things at the 25 yard line with a quarterback Patrick Mahomes the sophomore from White House Texas is now on the Manning and Maxwell watch list he has run for seven touchdowns accounted for over 3100 total yards and he's an exciting player, Dave. Very athletic guy back there. Not afraid of anything. He's fearless when he throws it. And he's able to extend plays with his legs. And, and talking to Coach Cliff Kingsbury, he said he's as healthy as he's been. He's had a knee that's bothered him a little bit. But we expect him to carry the ball on quarterback called runs between 8 and 10 times today. And Tech has an outstanding running back at number 21, DeAndre Washington. He's already over 2,000 yards in his career, and he has the football first and cuts back off a good block, and Washington will get outside the 40. He'll rumble into Oklahoma State territory and is finally pushed out of bounds at about the 44-yard line by Jordan Stearns, the Cowboys' leading tackler, after a 31-yard pickup. And this is where Tech loves to go fast after a big play, trying to get themselves lined up. Caught the edge on that run. Washington now 868 yards on the year on the ground. He'll get it again. Oh, a nice little move. And he'll fight for three, maybe two. Let's see. And once again, number 13 Stearns in there for Oklahoma State. Oh, and Washington just shook Jimmy Bean, who had the backside contained. Had to close the back door. And it was closed momentarily until Washington reopened it. Oklahoma State has two excellent defensive ends. Jimmy Bean, 92-38. Emmanuel Ogba, you'll... Talk more about those later as Mahomes goes wide open. This will be a Texas Tech touchdown. Justin Stockton out of the backfield for the Red Raiders, and they score on the 42-yard connection. Well, for the 11th time this year, Ray, they have put up a touchdown drive in under one minute. <laughs> they just go fast, and they were very good in the execution. I think the running game really opened things up for them initially. And they go for a two-point play on a... And draw a flag while doing it. Kind of lined up in that swinging gate deal. And, and ended up snapping it. Back judge indicating a defensive holding. We'll take a look at our referee, Alan Eck. Prior to the pass, holding number 31 defense. Half the distance to the goal. Strive for point will be accepted from the one and a half yard line. So you again have the option now. Do you go ahead and do the conventional one pointer? And that appears to be what Texas Tech is lining up to do. Yeah, they don't run the ball particularly well in this area of the field, Dave. They just don't have the personnel. I think it's a good decision to go ahead and kick here. And it'll be Clayton Hatfield handling the PATs. And we weren't sure if it would be Michael Barton or Clayton Hatfield. Hatfield not 100% healthy, but didn't show it on that effort. And a quick three-play, 75-yard drive in 46 seconds. Justin Stockton's first touchdown catch of the season. Another pass from Mahomes. Yeah, he just basically ran a wheel route, and the man who had coverage on him fell to the ground, and Texas Tech takes full advantage in an early 7-zip lead. And college football brought to you by Charles Schwab. Own your tomorrow and AT&T mobilizing your world. Well, for Oklahoma State, it has been a difficult and emotional week following last Saturday's homecoming tragedy when a car crashed into a crowd of spectators, killing three adults and a child and injuring nearly four dozen. And there was a moment of silence before the game. Folks here in Lubbock have been uh, outstanding in the way they have treated the Oklahoma State traveling party. Kickoff now received at the four-yard line. And smack 
down at about the 17 yard line for more on the week that has been for Oklahoma State let's welcome in Don Davenport well Dave head coach Mike Gundy told me he's really proud of the way his players have responded he left it up to them to decide how they wanted to reach out to this community they stepped away from football they joined around 75 Oklahoma State athletes visiting the injured in hospitals around the area now when the team got to Lubbock yesterday the Cowboys were welcomed with a Stillwater strong message on the video board the team today spending quite a bit of time together prior to the game you'll notice a new helmet decal guys the silhouette of the kneeling cowboy that will adorn those helmets for the remainder of the season all right Don thank you very much you began with the first possession for quarterback Mason Rudolph handing off to Chris Carson number 32 and the Texas Tech run defense bullying him up back only after a one yard pickup it'll be second down and nine and stopping the run is not something Ray Texas Tech has done well this year now it's been an issue for him and they're going to have a challenge today against this Oklahoma State offense led by sophomore quarterback Mason Rudolph who is not so much a running threat himself he's the passing quarterback but they run J.W. Walsh another quarterback in and he is a very effective runner and here comes a blitz in the corner picked up nicely and a strike right in the middle of the field caught by the slot receiver David Glidden and he's run out of bounds shy of the 50 yard line that'll be a first down for Oklahoma State this is a post snap decision by Mason Rudolph he looked down the field saw the safety kind of bite in on the run a little bit and he zips it to Glidden who is their best receiver in between the hashes he's fearless as he runs in there his 35th catch already this season the redshirt senior from Mustang Oklahoma back to the ground something Oklahoma State wants to try to establish today and Carson is wrapped up no gain there it'll be second down and 10. Micah Allway in there on the stop number three in the Big 12 in tackles. Allway actually had an opportunity he's a very bright young man petroleum engineer major had a chance to get a job with an oil company and turned it down to play one more year of football. I can't blame him a bit. There'll always be oil companies. <laughs> there won't always be football. Yeah. Right about that. That pass looks like it never came out of Rudolph's hand the right way. It'll be third down and ten on the incompletion. James Washington was the intended receiver. And watching Rudolph prior to this game, when he does miss, he misses high, and it's cost him some issues and some interceptions on tip balls. I think it's an issue where he doesn't finish the throw and follow through well enough. This is the third and long situation that Texas Tech wanted to be in. Dave. They can turn loose that pass rush and they will blitz. Pocket collapsing a bit. Rudolph very calmly stays in there, hits Washington, and that will be a first down. He needed a dozen. They needed 10. Nigel Bethel, the second out of Booker T. Washington High in Miami on the stop. An outstanding job by Mason Rudolph of stepping up into the pocket to avoid that edge rush. And then you got to give it to Washington coming back to get the football. Created separation between himself and the defender. Oklahoma State puts up about 480 total yards of offense per game. McCluskey goes in motion. They flip it to him. He gets one block, but that block wasn't that great. And he will get stuffed after about a two yard pickup, maybe only one. Several tacklers in there, but Dakota Allen, number 40, was the last to get him. Now, we mentioned that Texas Tech has had a tough time defensively, and the numbers do not lie in this case. No, any, anything over 100 is bad, and they're up in the 120s, and all three of those things. And the Oklahoma State offense. They score some points themselves, averaging just over 40 per game. The action fake, under pressure, rolling right, and a little floater to Jeremy Seaton, number 44, a three-time All-Academic in the Big 12. That's going to be incomplete third down and eight coming up. Mike Gundy is the head coach, of course, at Oklahoma State, coaching at his alma mater where he was a quarterback. Looking for win number 92. This is the 11th season. Renee, Renee Childs, I should say, number 23, is now into the tailback for OSU. And you see what they do on third downs this year. Very, very good. Now, one of the best in the country. I should mention Texas Tech is giving up 52% on third down. 
been a real problem for him. They bring the blitz. A lot of pressure, but it's picked up nicely. Rudolph hesitated and lost control of the ball. The ruling on the field is a fumble. They are not calling this incomplete. It's going to be fourth down, the recovery by Oklahoma State. It's a loss of six, and it looked like Michael Wilson fell on the football for OSU. And I saw this on film in their last game where Mason Rudolph dropped the football in a similar deal where he pumped and then let it go. I don't know. That looked like an incomplete pass to me. I think the hand was coming forward, but they're going to let it go. Zach Siner is the punter. Trying to put a little funky spin on this. Fair catch called for. It goes over the head. They got the kick they wanted. Now, did the ball cross the plane of the end zone? That look like no. That's a beautifully down punt by the Cowboys special teams at the three yard line a 42 yard punt and the college rule is all about where the football is. It doesn't matter if a player is in the end zone. What matters is does the ball break the plane and they ruled it did not and tech will have a long way to go when we come back. ESPN college football is presented by cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Dr. Pepper and college football, it's a one-of-a-kind tradition. We welcome you back to Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, Texas, for this Big 12 matchup. And Texas Tech in front on their opening drive, hooking up with Patrick Mahomes' 22nd touchdown pass of the season, hitting the sophomore speedster. They call it flash, Justin Stockton. And Oklahoma State did get a first down, but it had to punt, but it got a great punt from... Sinor, so now the Red Raiders begin at the three. Go chuck it. Catch made by Yakeem Grant, and he's got some moves, gets around one big body, has Mahomes as the lead blocker, and a beautiful job by the quarterback. Grant is still going. This is an unbelievable run. He's going to be gone. He could have a chance to take this. He needs one more block. Could this be 97 yards? They'll catch him from behind inside the 10-yard line. It looked like uh, he was running in quicksand at the end of this thing, Dave, because he had to cover at least a couple hundred yards on this play. And look how quickly Texas Tech wants to go following an 89-yard connection. They'll do it on the ground. This is Washington. And he'll get inside the five to about the four-yard line. The tackle by Vincent Taylor, number 96. I got to tell you, that will gas a defense to have to chase it down like that. Chad Whitener, the inside linebacker, eventually caught the receiver, uh, Grant, as he weaved his way throughout the field. But they are uh, sucking some air here early after that long play. Ground Washington up the gut and Ogba shuts him down number 38 Emmanuel Ogba we haven't had much chance to talk about him but don't worry it's going to be a long afternoon if whoever has to block this guy yeah he's just an outstanding ball player Dave he's got everything you want the complete package he's got speed on the edge the power his motor never stops and he's got great length a long wingspan reach out and just grab people and throw them on the ground they're down and goal from the three stopped it in motion now he stops they fake it to him. Mahomes on the keeper. Makes one miss. Now a little pop pass to Stockton. And they connect for the second touchdown. They stole this play out of the Oklahoma State playbook. This is what the Cowboys love to do with Walsh when he comes in. Although they don't add the pass to the edge at the end. That's just great. Uh, awareness, I'm going to call it, from the quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. Four plays, 97 yards in a minute and 33, so make it 25 touchdown drives under two minutes this season for the Red Raiders. Well, I would love to know, Ray, if that was a design all the way for Mahomes, or if he has a read and says, I don't have the run, I'm going to yeah. throw it. i got to think that that's part of the deal. That's the option. But let's go back to this drive and how it got started in this long play to Jakeem Grant, who he's going to start and basically on the edge. This is an out route to the left. He's going to end up all the way back to the sideline on the right side. And this defense is getting worn out as we speak. Great block there by Mahomes. That really set it up. Now he wants to go back the other way. This is, I don't know if I've seen a run like this, except maybe back on the playground in the day. And finally, he kind of runs out of gas here at the end and gets tracked down. 
And then the touchdown comes on the great play by Mahomes. He's going to run this ball to the edge. He knows he has a man out there. He's got the defenders in front of him. He knew he wasn't going anywhere. He dumps it out to the safety valve for a quick six. So there is that combination right there, Mahomes and Stockton. Two touchdown passes for those two today. Mahomes now 23 on the year, and Stockton with two touchdown catches. He didn't have any coming in the game. You never know in an offense like this, Dave, as I look down the stat sheet, so many guys have made catches, and there's a plethora of them with double-digit catches on this Red Raider offense. Let me correct one thing. That's actually Stockton's fourth touchdown catch of the season. He did have two more prior to that, so Stockton does have four touchdown catches on the year, and Oklahoma State, after really being stunned here in the opening, we've barely gotten five minutes apart. Let's get to the studio on Adnan Verk. All right, thank you very much. Want to update you what's happening right now at Clemson and NC State. First off, it's Jacoby Brissett here. This was on fourth and two, 13 yards. He will take that to the house. And then on second and seven, Clemson will respond with Deshaun Watson. Quarterbacks like to run. 7-6 on ABC and ESPN2. Back to you guys. All right, we've got a fast start here on them. It's no far for Texas Tech anyway. From the 25-yard line to the middle of the field. The completion got there at about the same time as the defender, but a fine catch for a nine-yard gain made by Marcel Aitman. Looks like they're going to mark him just shy. It'll be second down and a little less than a yard to go. Not even a, a foot. And I think Oklahoma State has to have some success on this drive to kind of you know, stop the bleeding a little bit here. They've been punched in the mouth early on. Play action. Quick throw. Quick completion. Short gain. First down. Picked up four that time. One of the things that Rudolph doesn't get a lot of credit for, Dave, is his hands. You don't hear that about quarterbacks so much, but his ability to catch those shotgun snaps and then just as quickly make a little fake and then get the ball out fast, he is a magician with the hands. Chris Carson is the tailback. Uh, Carson instead goes to the mid intercepted stolen away by Dakota Allen the 18th turnover created by a Texas Tech team that works really hard at stealing the football for coordinator David Gibbs yeah, and he just got himself right in the passing lane to Dakota Allen and Rudolph never saw him and take a look at this play. It's really a, a, a screen where he's going to come in here. He's going to come out here. They call it the read screen screen. That's the linebacker right there. Watch how he all of a sudden appears in that passing lane and step up and then boom. He's right there. And uh, I believe Rudolph thought he could get it by the linebacker Dakota Allen, but he wasn't able to. He came back. He was initially looking to throw the flare and then just changed his mind at the last second and it cost him if you're an Oklahoma State fan you're sitting there watching this in your home or on your mobile device you have to be asking yourself why did he not see that linebacker and I think he had his eyes to the outside Dave initially and he wanted to throw that decided that the corner had come up and taken it away effectively so he came came back to the inside route and threw it before he looked Big up a three on the run by Mahomes. It'll be second down and seven coming up. Another tackle by Jordan Stearns. Already three early in the ball game. Oh. Empty backfield set. Sometimes difficult to pass protect. Although the Cowboys are only showing four men in the, four men in the rush. And they really only rush three. Dropped one in the coverage. There's a flare out. The catch made by Batson number 13. That will be your first down as we check in again with Don Davenport. Hey guys, this is a very tired Oklahoma State defense. They were trying to catch their breath over here, huffing and puffing. Not a whole lot of conversation or adjustments made over here. And Glenn Spencer runs that group, and he is uh, coordinating from the field. A lot of coordinators sit in the press box. A few of them are on the field, and he is one of them. Pass out to Washington, and he slipped. And I was waiting for them to call him down. Yeah, they finally yeah, did. They finally did. I thought we were playing on Sunday for a second. <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm okay with that rule. It's going to be a I loss agree. of three. You know, 
following up on what Don said, I've been in those situations where you get put on the field in a long drive or a long play that really gasses you, and then to have a quick turnover by your offense, I wouldn't be surprised if Oklahoma State burns a timeout if this drive continues. Well, don't forget the speed at which Texas Tech likes to score or is able to score. Washington went over one. He got hit hard when he did that by Seth Jacobs, number 10. So it's a pickup of four there. 25 drives under two minutes for touchdowns. 11 make the, yeah, 11 of those now, counting the one earlier, under one minute. Cliff Kingsbury, the head coach, played quarterback here in the early days of the air raid attack of Mike Leach. And things have changed a little bit in the modern version of the air raid. More on that in a minute. Mahomes steps away from the pressure, fires it just a little too high and hard. That time for Cameron Batson. It'll be fourth down and nine. And when we talked to Coach Kingsbury, he said, you know, back in the day with Mike Leach, he had about eight to ten pass plays, a couple runs, and they just repped them and worked them and worked them, and they said, you got to be good enough to stop us. He said the modern version, they do a little more game planning, they add a little bit more to the run game, and they have a little more in the routes as well. So it's a little more evolved nowadays. If Clayton Hatfield converts this 42-yarder, it'll be his longest kick of the season. And Texas Tech is off to the best possible start. Trying to get both eligible and also throw a little thorn in the Oklahoma State Rose. They're off to a great start. We welcome you to Jones AT&T Stadium. This is ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. We don't want you missing any college football action while you're on the go. And stream every game live on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Just download the Watch ESPN app or go to watchespn.com. That's how we were keeping up with that Ole Miss Auburn game that was ahead of us today. Won by Ole Miss. How about these numbers, Dave? Tech with 186 total yards to just 51 for Oklahoma State. And Tech already has three plays of 30 yards plus. They put up 600 total yards on offense average per game. It's third in the country, and that's pretty good. But it's not as if Oklahoma State can't score either, and Texas Tech has struggled defensively this season, although not yet. They certainly haven't shown it. Well, let's give you some of our winning conditions brought to you by Goodyear. Beautiful uh, facility here at Texas Tech, Dave. We were able to go in there and check it out yesterday. They built it 2001. Memorabilia, coaches' offices, meeting rooms, and all their trophies from the bowl games, individual trophies, and uh, that little weight room there. And the dungeon. I love being a nice little weight room. So Oklahoma State got to be a little seasick at this point. They just can't get their legs in the early going. They'll go to the ground and Childs. And there you see Allen who had the interception just swallow him up. No gain on the play. This is not the Texas Tech defense that gives up 561 and a half yards total on average. No, they are playing really well right now. And you know, we talked to David Gibbs, the defensive coordinator, and he played the woe is me card and he played it hard. And I, I, I could relate a little bit, but I'll tell you what, he's got his guys ready. He said they practiced the best all year the last couple of weeks. In motion, there's that little fan. Now a reverse. They go back the other way to Washington. At the 30, 35, Washington. He gets cut down around the 40-yard line, but it'll be a first down for Oklahoma State. Nice design, 17-yard pickup. Yeah, a little flip forward and then flip it on the way back. And watch the quarterback right here. Just watch how he's going to get himself in position to make a block and get this thing going. Right there, he just knocked down a defender trying to penetrate. And back to live action, you can see Rennie Childs lowering the boom on a defender. An aggressive run that time by the junior from Houston. Thierry Gima on the stop, a gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. And Oklahoma State, their defense wants this to be a extended drive so they can get over there and get some rest. No doubt, yeah, their, their defense has been pushed around. And that's a surprise coming into the game. They're one of the best in the country. Quick throw to the middle. They like to throw to that middle so far anyway. That's been the plan. Aikman with a catch and a first down for Oklahoma State. So that leads me to this question, Ray. How do you pace your offense when you have a tired defense? Yeah, you don't. You just got to try to score. And, and their quick tempo outfit, they're going to go as fast as what they go and do what they do. That shoulder shake means he's going to take a deep shot. Incomplete. 
Stride for stride with the receiver Aitman that time. Texas Tech able to cover it. It'll be second down and 10. Yeah, a little double move. They love to take those shots uh, with a pump fake, a little outside cutting, and Aitman just took it up the sidelines just out of the outstretched hands of the receiver. I really like the way Rudolph throws the deep ball. He drops him right into the bucket. What's it up high, Dave? Because of the lack of red zone so far or scoring zone, we still haven't seen J.W. Walsh come into the game yet. The red zone specialist, the quarterback for the Cowboys. Comes at middle of the field. There's Glidden. And he is smacked down to the 19-yard line with a solid tackle by J.J. Gaines. But it's a first down following a 19-yard pickup. Really nice job on the play action. It totally froze the secondary. And there again, you said it earlier, when he misses, he misses high. Chris Lacey was the intended receiver. That'll stop the clock at 4.31 to go, and it's second and 10. And it wasn't that high. Lacey should have come down with that. And boy, the defender was way off of him. He had all day. Every time out, we set the play clock at 40 seconds. And that player down to the nine-yard line, and that is Thierry Gima, a junior from Corona, California. When you take a look at Mike Gundy, mentioned this is his 11th season uh, both these coaches coaching at their alma maters, the head coaches here. Got a big one for you tonight on ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart. Notre Dame ranked number nine. You kind of expected that, but how many people thought Temple would be number 21? It's Notre Dame and Temple tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. And the Irish do bring a couple of playmakers into Philly. Yeah, they do, and it's amazing what the Irish have been able to do in spite of the injuries that they've had to overcome. Brosice was a wide receiver when the season started. You saw Temple in person. What you think? Outstanding football team. Great defense. Now, that's going to be a whale of a football game. If Temple can get something going on offense, they could give Notre Dame a run for their money. And it being at home and all those things, a sellout crowd at the yeah, link. At the link, that's a great yeah, place. It's, it's going to be an electric atmosphere for sure. Eighth play of the drive. Hayes goes in motion. Backwards pass to Hayes, and he's got to pick that up. Lefty flipper caught the f and it's a touchdown. Blake Jarwin, the cowboy back. And Hayes, great recovery to ad lib that. So they took advantage of the injury break and cooked up a trick play. Now the ruling on the field is touchdown. Let's take a look at it right here. And Jarwin, he makes the grab. Pulls it in, and he's now he's just got to get the ball inside the pylon. I don't know that he did. It's hard to see the football from that angle. You've got an official with an excellent view. He did call touchdown on the field. I, I'm going to say that is a touchdown just by my look at it. He. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, see, we can't see the feet from that angle, but the replay booth did not buzz down. They were satisfied. It's an eight-play, 75-yard drive and a minute and 56, and Oklahoma State begins the climb back. All right, here's the guy who makes the touchdown, the tight end right there. He's just going to take off immediately and release. And everything else looks like quick screen to the outside. Defenders are running. Now he has a man man to man on him, and that's Malik Jenkins. But Jenkins got beat off the mark and was not able to make the play. That's some nice razzle dazzle from these Cowboys. And great poise by Hayes because he knew there was a defender coming right at him. He bobbled the lateral and yet was able to get that pass off. Hunt's going to run this out. Wasn't sure, but we see that Grant can move. We know he can go. It's the foot race to the end zone, and it's going to be won by Grant. 100 yards. Well, I got to tell you. We're all setting up thinking he's going to take a knee and we're going to start at the 25 yard line. But Jakeem Grant's got other ideas. This is the fourth time he has housed a kickoff return in his career. And, and the second one this year, Dave. And what happens a lot of times when it's a deeper kick like that and the guy doesn't look like he's coming out, the defenders will slow down a little bit. But the problem with this return was Oklahoma State got all bunched up in the middle. 
So Grant has had a 90 yard reception that didn't go for a touchdown. This time he did he, no doubt 100 yards officially. And watch them bunch up into the middle here. And then he's going to bust it to the outside, finds that seam. Guys did not stay in their lanes. He shook the kicker. That's the last man to beat. Turned into a foot race. And Grant, he wins that one big time. How about that explosive play from the special teams? of this Texas Tech Red Raider football team. You have to know with Grant who is, came into the game second in Texas Tech history in kickoff return yards over 1700 averaging 25. You mentioned he had one touchdown already four for his career now two this year. So that's a threat. But I think I was a little bit surprised he took that one out. It was about three yards deep. We call it 100 because in college unlike the NFL they don't add that extra distance. But what a punch in the gut. Here's Oklahoma State. We talked about resting their defense. Well, they're going to get more rest because their special teams couldn't keep Grant out of the end zone. Yeah, there's your silver lining for the Cowboys. But that that is just uh, something you cannot allow. And you know, when we spoke to Coach Gundy, I, I asked him his three keys to the game. He said they need to tackle in space and they need to take care of the football and they have to be solid on special teams well they weren't too solid on that one yeah, we know we made Adnan Burke wait because we thought we were going to go to him so Adnan hold on if this kick gets returned buddy just wait this is Jeff Carr he's pretty fast and they've got him bottled up all right Adnan it's your turn <laughs> Dave, I always have time for you, sir. It is the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Update. It's a wild game between Clemson and NC State as well. Deshaun Watson to Hunter Renfro, 57 yards for the touchdown. Four scores in less than the first five minutes. 13 all right now. Back to you guys. Yeah, it's been crazy here too, partner. Thank you very much. 24 to 7 with Ray Bentley. I'm Dave Lamont upstairs, Don Davenport downstairs, enjoying a sun splash Lubbock afternoon. 70 degrees at kickoff. Time for Rudolph to fire. Sliding grab made, but the that'll cost him the first down to eight and nine for Aitman. Second out of one coming up. And more play action on first down from this Cowboy offense. That's when they're going to do it probably the most in a run situation. And they are so far winning those battles on the edge. Rudolph, eight of 13 for 104 and an interception. Carson, nice hole there. And Carson will get out to the 38 yard line. You see one thing you notice how those Texas Tech players are going for the football. That is something that David Gibbs the coordinator here really emphasizes. Gain of 11. Now he would also tell you sometimes at the expense of a tackle they go for the football. Yes and that's not all bad. Pressure coming from the edge. Nice job by Rudolph. As he throws, and a great catch made him right in the center of the field by Brandon Shepard, who now has caught a pass in 23 consecutive. And just as soon as we say, Oklahoma State is already lining up to snap another play. Yeah, and they brought the inside linebacker and the outside linebacker, both Jenkins and Allen. And the protection picked it up, and Rudolph stepped up into the pocket and made the throw. And Rudolph is feeling it. I don't know. Did that pass hit the turf? The ruling on the field is it did not. But instead, it hit the hands of Chris Lacey, and it'll be an 11 yard pickup and a first down. And that's the second time throwing to his left where Rudolph has underthrown the football. He's much more comfortable throwing it to his right. He's got most of his receivers bunched left. A handoff to Child, and he is swallowed up by Micah Allway. The senior from Arlington, Texas, a team captain, number 18, maybe a yard. And always just steps up and from that linebacker position. There's the big fella right there. He's gonna, he's got the back door, and he just steps right into it and slams it shut. Whistles, and I think we've got a timeout by the Red Raiders. We do. Timeout. Texas Tech. It's their first charge of the half. 30 seconds so Cliff Kingsbury calling everybody together. Might be uh, as much as uh, trying to slow the Cowboys down with a timeout there well, as anything. Dave. You said it would work the other way when Tech was rolling down the field and Oklahoma State might do that and Cliff Kingsbury may have recognized that as well. 
It is a nice, warm, sunny afternoon here in Lubbock. I don't believe the weather's going to have too much of an effect, but I tell you what the running around is. You got a decent breeze, too, going left to right right now at the backs of the Cowboys. You know, we made, I made you wait last week, Ray, you on did. Aflac. So I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to rush it. I'm not going to try to hide it. We're just going to go ahead. Yeah. And It'll be the first time. But what is the furthest city to host an Oklahoma State Texas Tech football game? The furthest from what? Well, from either Stillwater or Lubbock. Mm. In other words, not in either of those two cities. Right. Furthest. Uh, boy, let's say. Uh, uh, take. Well, you want to take a guess now? Oh yeah, I think you I know. Time. I'm at Put the top your phone of the line. No phone. No, no, I don't play that way. All right. I'm gonna say uh, the old Cotton Bowl. Oh, Dallas, Texas, the Cotton Bowl. Um, okay, that's your guess. We're yeah. not going to make you wait since this timeout is a longer timeout, uh, not a 30-second timeout. I hate waiting. Uh, you're not right. No, well, I was close. You no. weren't even in the right country. <laughs> you had to go to Tokyo oh. in 1988. Oklahoma State won that one, 45-41. Now I remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, of course you do. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? Yeah. Uh, well, it is Halloween. She, uh, I've never proposal seen there for a you. Uh, headset with a wedding dress. <laughs> That's a unique combination. Yeah, she's just showing Coach Kingsbury that she's down with the football stuff. Second and nine. Unbalanced line here. Walsh and for the in. first time today, J.W. Walsh steps in at quarterback, and he'll take off. This is not a surprise to see him running the football as J.J. Gaines smacked him down. And normally, Walsh comes in in the red or scoring zone as Oklahoma State calls it. Right, 10 yards and in. But they, they have used him more and more as the season has worn on. You know, when they talked about it, they thought initially, eh, it would be a nice little package. We'll try it. But it's been so successful, Dave, that they keep adding to it. And this time they were waiting, and he takes a direct hit. From Jason Johnson, Deshaun Johnson, I should say, number seven, and that will be a loss. Dakota Allen was there too. Right, Allen shows up once again from that middle linebacker spot. He's been all over the field thus far today, and uh, I believe Walsh initially wanted to throw the football, get it out quick, pop pass to his tight end. That was covered up, nowhere to go with it, so he tucked it away and tried to make something out of it. That's a loss of six. So it'll be second down and 16, and Mason Rudolph comes back into the game, number two. Football rolled off the spot. That's Raymond Taylor on the play action fake, and it's Rudolph, and he was looking for a block. He yeah, stopped for a out. second and Rudolph, Rudolph, practically Garrier. yelled at Austin Hayes, block. Yeah, get that guy right there. What a great job on the fake in terms of the zone read. He knew that. The uh, defender on the edge was coming after the tailback. That's Pete Robertson. And so what he did was he pulled it, and there was nobody left to take quarterback. When you have a running quarterback like this, you have to play assignment football. That means somebody has to take running back, somebody quarterback, and someone else pitch if that gets involved in it. 35. Going to throw the fade. Catch by Hayes. Is it a touchdown? No. Is it? Let's see. I, I, I thought it was. was. I thought so too. But I thought there was a ruling on the field that he was out of bounds. And that is the call. Let's take a closer look. He got a foot in, in my opinion. Let's take a look at it here, Dave. He's got the football, right foot down. Previous play clearly really in the end zone. That's touchdown. Is under review. Now the other issue that always comes up is did he complete the catch? Did he maintain control throughout? And we'll get a look. Well, You're absolutely right. The foot is clearly in. I think he might have even got uh, the other foot in. And uh, yes, he did maintain possession throughout the process of the catch. As a Detroit Lions and Calvin Johnson <laughs> fan, I can <laughs> affirm to you. Oh, my gosh. That he did finish the process. Madison right there in coverage. The ruling on the field is, is incomplete, and we're looking at fourth down and five. But as we oh, take a closer this, look. This is a touchdown. I got to believe Don yep. Capital, our replay official, Stopped by the booth here before the game, said hello, and his communicator, Reed Wren. 
some capable hands next door to us. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you, Ray. This looks to me like a touchdown. It shouldn't take them much longer to overturn the call on the field. Yeah, the elements are, does he have control of the football? Does he get a part of his body in bounds? And then does he finish the process, maintaining possession of the ball throughout the end of the play, going to the ground? And he meets all three of those criteria. If this holds up, and we'll find out if this is reversed. After review, the receiver got his right foot down, inbounds, with firm control of the ball. Touchdown. And that is the correct answer. And that's Hayes' first touchdown catch of the season and third for his career. In fact, his first touchdown catch since 2012. That was one heck of a throw, too, Dave. I mean, that dropped in there perfectly. Gave him just enough room on the outside to make that play. So we've got the potential here for 38 points if this PAT is good, and we still have 42 seconds, and they still have to kick it to Jakeem Grant. Welcome to Big 12 football. Yeah. Nine plays, 82 yards in three minutes and 25 seconds, and that 12-yard touchdown pass for Rudolph is 11th on the season now. And Rudolph dropped that in there beautifully. That was really a, a tough deal on Tevin Madison, the corner. That's a hard play to make. Mike Gundy's team has usually come out on top in recent matchups. The last time they lost Oklahoma State to Texas Tech was 2008. Graham Harrell was the TTU quarterback. Tech holds the all-time lead. The winner, 30-plus points in 14 of the last 16 matchups. Cowboys on a six-game win streak in the series that began in 1935. Now, here's the fun part. You've just seen Jakeem Grant run back a 100-yarder here. And unless you... <laughs> I'm not sure what the strategy is unless you pooch it, you well, squib it, you can't you got, kick it out of bounds. You got the wind behind you the way that they're going, so I say try to kick it in the first row. He might still go get it. You're right. Grogan uh, on 52 kickoffs coming into the game, just 15 touchbacks, so the leg is not the strongest. You and push he's going to play conservatively here, and that is outstanding work. 33 yard line. Let's get back. Speaking of outstanding work to add now to the studio. Dave Lamont soaring to the top of my favorite play by play man. Thank you, sir. Oklahoma and Kansas. Wait for it. Frozen in time, but it's Baker Mayfield, the Sterling Shepherd here. Mayfield, the great first quarter. He's got three touchdown passes. They're up 21 7 on Kansas. Dave, you're the best. Back to you. Gift baskets on the way, and Thank you very much. 24-14 here with 40 seconds remaining in this opening quarter. It has been everything you'd like in a Big 12 game. I ask you this, Ray. We talked about this this morning. A higher scoring game, which we're already on the way to. Which team do you think that might favor? Oh, I think it favors Texas Tech without a doubt because their defense gives up 40 points a game on average. And Oklahoma State just 18.9. Yeah, and you saw Mahomes just decided, I am not Receiver doing anything. Receiver number 21 was in the area of the pass. It's second down. So let's go to our primetime spotlight brought to us by U.S. Navy and the two ends for Oklahoma. Speed rush, guys. I, I give a little bit of an advantage to Ogba with the power that he mixes in as well. It's a difficult task to block these two guys all afternoon, and uh, they'll make their share of plays. So a little hand signal from Mahomes. And Washington will get the football. He is a powerful runner in a small body. 5'8", 200 pounds of muscle. Gain of two there, third down and eight. Hey, you saw the hand signal. They'll use those both as uh, legitimate signals to signal routes to the guys on the edge and also to confuse the defense, kind of decoy signals. They'll, they'll dummy them up sometimes. They do get the snap off before the end of the quarter. Mahomes on the run, guns it. And that will be into Oklahoma State territory. The catch made by Jakeem Grant. He had an eventful first quarter, to say the least. Yeah. And so did everybody. Although, wait a minute, with three seconds to go, who knows with these guys? It was a gain of 20. Yeah, they're going to take a break. Yeah, that's, that's the end of the We all could quarter. use one there. That was the end of a very exciting first quarter. The good news is we got three more of these to go. Two touchdown passes. Mahomes to Stockton. This return by Grant. And the Red Raiders are in front by 10. Second quarter about to begin. I'm Dave Lamont with Ray Bentley, Don Davenport, 
on the sidelines. An absolutely beautiful day and breezy here in Lubbock at Jones AT&T Stadium. 24-14 after one, the Red Raiders looking for the upset here over the unbeaten Oklahoma State Cowboys. This is Washington. And we'll get to the 40-yard line. Gain of three. Not surprisingly, the Red Raiders have found some explosive plays this season. Yeah, they are an explosive outfit. You look at the ranks, Dave, first or second in all of these distances. And so far today, they've got a 20-yard pass, a 42-yard pass, a 90-yard pass, and a 31-yard run, which we've added to those totals. Now a handoff to Justin Stockton. And Stockton is wrapped up in the open field. A good tackle by Trey Justin Flowers Stockton. from Converse, Texas, a redshirt sophomore. Another gain of three. Looking kind a of third down here and about three, maybe four. One of the things that makes this offense so effective, Dave, is, is the, the quarterback and Mahomes getting the ball out of his hand so quickly. It negates the strengths of the opponents. It's the strength of this Oklahoma State team is their pass rush and those defensive ends we talked about. And it doesn't matter because they get rid of the football too quickly. Yeah, no sacks so far for a team that came in second in the NCAA with 28 sacks. And Mahomes, and also some good blocking as he does get rid of it. And it's a dart. Knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line. The catch made by Ian Sadler. That's a first down for Texas Tech. And Mahomes is on fire right now. He's just throwing the ball all over the yard, extremely accurate, whether he's on the move or standing in the pocket. He wasn't very happy that the center judge held on to the football a little bit longer. Mahomes will take the short route, and it'll be a four-yard pickup at the 21-yard line. Stockton really figuring into this offense today as he's brought down by Devontae Averett. And Mahomes had Stockton early with a lot of room, but he waited to see if the next level receiver came open. He did not, and that really kind of allowed the defense to close on Stockton. Mahomes started 5-5. Five of five. He's 8-10, of 10, 179, and two touchdowns. It's an afternoon for some people. Not in this conference. Going to go backwards this time. That's great. And this time, he, as many incredible moves as he's given us already today, that time the turf got him. The turf paid him back. Loss of a yard. He kind of screwed himself into the ground there with a little bit. But he, he got kind of pinned in by the inside defenders. You see, look at that. 210 yards in just the first quarter. That's the best in FBS this season. I can't imagine a better quarter. Again, that's a whole game for some, a lot of people. Yeah. Empty set here. Rushing three, Ogba flushing out Mahomes. And he will have to keep it. And he will take his shot, but he got the first down. To the 13-yard line. Jacobs brought him down, but Mahomes picks up nine when he needed eight. Great awareness by Mahomes of knowing where he was on the field, how far he had to get for the first down, because generally he's going to try to get down and not get hit in those situations. But he saw a chance to get the first down and it took the hit in order to do so. He does have seven rushing touchdowns this season. And he'll keep it after the fake from Washington. And that time, the middle of the Oklahoma State defense did not bend. No gain on the play. Jordan Burton, Chad Whitener in there, and you see getting up off the ground finally. Eric Davis helped disrupt that play, number 97. Well, there was a tremendous hit on that play by Devontae Averett, who the guard pulling around. He hit him, and I heard it all the way up here, David. <laughs> my teeth rattled. But you like that. I do. I'm <laughs> trying to sit back down here. I can't. <laughs> Mahomes to the end zone, slant pattern, touchdown, Red Raiders. And a little shaken up following the touchdown. The catch was made by Grant. Well, they can't afford to lose him. No, I didn't see exactly what happened. He was able to concentrate long enough to hang on to the touchdown pass. And we'll get a better look. You see his numbers already. Plus, he has a kickoff return touchdown. Yeah, Flowers is going to land on his ankle after he beats him across his face right there to get the separation but watch flowers lands on that ankle mm. as he comes down and that's where the injury occurred 11 play 65 yard drive in four minutes and five seconds which is an eternity for texas tech mahomes 10 of 12 190 and already three touchdown passes giving him 24 on the year but it's silent now in lubbock because of the injury to grant let's hope he can shake that thing off and continue this ball game because he's been a pleasure a lot of fun to oh watch God, he's been incredible yeah the 
Oklahoma State players also with some nice sportsmanship as he tries to walk that off. Well, they, they, they've seen what Grant's done today. They respect that. He's walking better and better as he goes. I've been in that situation, and sometimes you can walk those off. Probably retape uh, re his ankle is what generally happens after something like that. His fifth touchdown reception on the season. And right now, Texas Tech is rolling against one of the best defenses in the country. Oklahoma State was giving him 18.9 points per game, and you see Tech already with 31. Celebrating its 11th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has donated millions in scholarship funds, and they're going to be out a few more bucks today. <laughs> yeah, right? The Nets have been getting a workout here this afternoon. Tech scored on all five of their possessions thus far, including that kickoff return. Oklahoma State has scored on their last two drives after coming up short on their first two. And you, apparently, based on today's pace, you can't miss a scoring opportunity. Car a couple yards deep in the end zone. Trying to weave his way through traffic, and he does a pretty good job of it. Gets to the 33-yard line as we will check in once again with that down in the studio. All right, thank you very much, Dave. Just want to keep you up to date what's happened with Maryland and Iowa. Akram Wadley, who has not missed a beat since taking over for Jordan Kanziri. 14 to nothing here, 10 carries, 60 yards, and that score on ABC and ESPN2. Yeah, Maryland, we saw last week, Ray, uh, in a tight game against Penn State, played in the Ravens ballpark in Baltimore, and the first game for Mike Loxley as interim head coach. And I thought they showed a little more fire and put Penn State to the wire in that one. Now a little flip to Jalen McCluskey, and McCluskey is brought down in a good tackle in the open field. It really was. J.J. Gaines had that uh, contain, and he forced it inside, but then he closes very quickly and makes the open field tackle. And so far today, this Tech defense has tackled extremely well, and that's been one of their issues. And that's something that you prided yourself on in your linebacker days. Second down and seven coming up. Stretch play, nice cutback by Carson. He'll get to the 40-yard line. It'll be a couple of yards short of the first down as we check in with Don Davenport. Guys, Cliff Kingsbury on point down here today. Walked down the defensive bench, telling his guys, "I want that ball back. Get that ball back. They cannot stop us today." Well, he's right. Yeah, <laughs> At this so point, far. he's yeah. absolutely right. And Coach Kingsbury calls the plays, and I uh, asked him about that. You know, being a head coach and all the other things you have to worry about. He said it just means I have to get up a little earlier. He comes in earlier than everyone else to do his offensive coordinator work as he calls the plays and then handles everything else from then on. I'm kind of admitted he's still learning on the job a little bit. Double pass. Double pass indeed. They're coming back to Rudolph. And he'll get a key block. And look at the blockers downfield for Oklahoma State. And I tell you what. That play in the open field by Texas Tech kept that from being a huge play. And once again, it's J.J. Gaines. Yeah, it was amazing, the lineup they had. Now, here we go. It's got to be a lateral. It is. It comes back from Carson. And look at this line here. They have an offensive lineman. But they whiffed. They, they didn't no, hit the, Bethel. The, the one defender that was over there was Bethel, and he yep. ran right by him. It wasn't Gaines number three. It was Bethel number one. It's still a seven-yard gain, and it's still a first down. Oklahoma State has really gone to several trick plays already in this one, and they're down 17. Rudolph. Well, the ball's just dropped by Washington. They got a high sun, I know. He had to wait just a second, but he just could not catch it. Second and 10. Yeah, he had his man beat on the edge, no doubt about it. And this is one of them deep shots that you'll take from time to time, but he just simply dropped the football as Madison on coverage was beaten badly. Can't miss those opportunities. Not when the other team's scoring every time they have the football. Fakes the child, gets out of the way. Rudolph in some trouble. He knows it. He's just going to run himself out of bounds. It was Rika Levy, number 33, who flushed him out. 
Yeah, and he just comes off the edge, and they totally do not block him. And a lot of times they'll do that expecting that defensive end to you know move down the line as opposed to come up field. And that time uh, Levy missed himself a sack. It was right there on the plate ready to eat. Three out of four third downs for a team that converts 46 percent on average. Rudolph steps into that throw and connects. That'll be a first down. Diving grab made by David Glidden for 14. Glidden is the leader of this offense. And coaches talk admirably about him. Just the way he gets people going. As tough as nails. Not the biggest guy at 5'8", 185. But he'll go over the middle with the best of them. Well, then you know what? You can make a nice living being that size in the NFL. Going over the middle and catching passes. He's 3 for 62 so far. Yeah, it should be a, send him to New England. They'll make something out of it. They always do. Oh, clean hit. No, no, maybe not a clean hit. The flag comes down against Deshaun Johnson. Looked okay at first, but the official is much closer than we are. The hit on Glidden. And let's get the exact ruling from the field. Now they're discussing targeting on this situation. And the question is, did he use the crown of his helmet? That's yep. the, you know, the hairline area. Or did he keep his head up? If he kept his head up, that's good football play. But if he dropped the head and used the crown, then that's a, an ejectionable offense. Personal foul. Targeting. Number seven, defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. The play is under review. This can be overturned. Right. They automatically review these just to be sure, Dave. You don't want to throw a guy out of a game over a call, and that's not targeting. He led with his face mask, not the crown of the helmet. And did not leave his feet either. That's, that's also part of a targeting penalty. Yeah, they put launching into it as an indicator, but it's certainly not an infraction launching, isn't it? Oh, that's just no, that angle right play. there looks like it's a clean play. Now watch his his head and the level the head does not drop that's face mask to face mask I believe they'll bring him back in this ball game and pick up this flag now if he is ejected if the ruling on the field stands he is out for the rest of this game but would be eligible to return the next time the Texas Tech takes the field which will be at West Virginia on November the 7th yeah, if you can't make a play that like that in football in my opinion it's not worth playing anymore. And it wasn't as if he was defenseless because you see the quickness of how the ball in completion and then the contact. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Ooh. Number seven is disqualified. Well, that's a, that's I, a shame. I, I vote with you on that. I don't agree with that call at all. And we will undoubtedly talk to our buddy next door about that. The replay official today, Don Caprell. And uh, I'm really curious as to what he saw. He's well. He saw helmet to helmet contact. It's a forcible blow. There's no doubt about that. That that uh, criteria was met. But the crown of the helmet was not used. It's, it's just a tackle. That's a. I don't know. Man. All right. First down and ten. First penalty of the game against Texas Tech. Johnson out for the rest of the game. And the ball is at the 23 yard line of the Red Raiders. Oklahoma State gets a favorable call. Now pick up 15. Chris Carson is the tailback. We'll see if they put out number 24, Peyton Hendricks. J.W. Walsh is the quarterback. Hendricks to replace Johnson. He is the backup at free safety. Walsh back foot throw. And what a grab that was in traffic. With the defender Keenan Ward raked all over him, a gain of 19 and a first down by Chris Carson. Yeah, that's Carson just coming out of the backfield and he got a nice matchup, a favorable matchup, and uses his body to ward off the defender Ward. So now this is where Walsh is very dangerous at running the football. He's set up the unbalanced look here. He'll hand it off though, and bouncing in for the end zone is Raymond Taylor the fourth string of running back excellent read by J.W. Walsh in terms of giving that football I mean, that's that's what he's supposed to do is read that edge man to his left he sees that that guy is 
in position to perhaps make a play on him. And how about the power of Taylor just running through a tech defender? Eight plays, 67 yards, and 313. Well, look, Oklahoma State and Texas Tech, they're all open to the same film. Tech knew that Walsh had three touchdown runs last week against Kansas. They had to figure that it was coming again, and they were fooled to hand off to Taylor. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Ford Service. When your Ford needs service, you need the specialists at Ford. And Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Georgia Day in Lubbock. And we are delighted to bring you what has been a Big 12 game. Right, a, a, almost a cliche with this conference and the ability for Texas Tech and Oklahoma State to move up and down the field. One of the touchdowns was a kickoff return for the Red Raiders by that guy. We're delighted to tell you that Jakeem Grant, whatever was wrong with his ankle, has been fixed. At least it's been taped up, and he's going to give it a go. That's great to see. He has been outstanding throughout the afternoon. And a great crowd here in Lubbock as well. Enjoying this. He won't kick it to him. Uh, that may be the last time he'll return a kick today. This is Justin Stockton. Now, he's got some moves and some speed as well. He's already got two touchdowns on the receiving end. He stopped at the 22. Let's get back to the studio and check in with that man. Thank you very much, Dave. The Taco Bell Studio Update. You guys have seen some crazy plays in special teams. How about this? Georgia and Florida. Reggie Davis coughs it up. Nick Washington will recover it. A key SEC clash. The touchdown there is Florida's up 6-0. Back to you, Dave. All right. Beautiful day in Jacksonville as well. And we see already, let's see, 500 carry the two. Yeah, carry the numbers right there. 511 total yards. And that's in a quarter and a half. Actually, a little uh, less than a quarter and a half. We're on pace for... What, almost, uh, almost After the play yards. was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number six receiving team. At the distance of the goal, first down. That was number six, first, unsportsmanlike foul. A second will be an ejection. So that gets the crowd rumbling, unhappy already with the officials because of the controversial targeting ruling. So now Texas Tech will take over at the 10 yard line. They got a red hot and competent quarterback. Don't forget they started one drive at the three and scored on that. Grant in motion. Will they go that way? Mahomes stepping up. Yeah, they're going to go to Grant. Ankle looks okay. I think his ankle looks great. Yeah. And he gets dropped at about the 13 yard line by a gaggle. Seth Jacobs leading that group. It's a gain of three, second down and seven. And Mahomes was looking for his tight end. Actually, it was uh, McCleskey. Take that back. It was Pearson down the middle, and that was covered up very well by the Cowboy defense. So we had to dump it off to Grant. Hold everything. Play is dead. Flag down. One thing you don't have to worry about with this tech All offense. All star, number 51, offense, five yard penalty. It's second down. Is a delay of game. Well, I bet they don't get one all year. No. <laughs> I don't, you know, we don't have a breakdown of each individual penalty in the notes, but I'll, you're probably right. Second down and a dozen coming up. And Morales got a little bit of an early start, but this offensive line for the Red Raiders has been outstanding so far today. Staying in the block as the running back as Mahomes airs it out, and it's going to be third down and 12 coming up. And a flag is down. Devin Lauderdale was the intended receiver. That flag is in the secondary. That ball was a good 15, 10 yards beyond where the receiver and defender were. It's called holding, though. Yeah, the whole sometimes that uncatchable passing, you almost never hear that called either, the uncatchable ball and an interference. Pass interference, number 17, defense. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. That's Michael Hunter who started his college career at Indiana. Yeah, up at the top of your screen, and it's a, a foot race here, and you see uh, you got the arm bar going. Hunter stuck the arm out and impeded the progress of the receiver. I think that's a fairly decent call. 
straight ahead. Look, what a nice move there by Washington in traffic. Picked up a couple. Got to the 25 for two. Second down and eight coming up. Meantime, we have not mentioned Emmanuel Ogba very much at all. Number 38 for Oklahoma State. He's had a quiet game. And that's because the ball is coming out so fast. You know, it takes a little time to rush around that edge and get there, and Mahomes is getting rid of it. We're talking about an All-American candidate in Ogba. He takes the inside route on the rush, and it's going to be 38 as the pass for Sadler was overcooked. It can become very frustrating for a defensive end, especially one of you know, the impact that Agba makes in a ball game when you're rushing down after down and the, the ball just keeps coming out. But he's just got to hang in there and keep going because eventually Mahomes will have to hold the football and that's when Agba has to get home himself. Looks like they might have that little radar thing going up. They're going to, yeah, everybody's standing up. Mahomes on the run, being chased by Agba. And forcing the overthrow incomplete fourth and eight. So right when we talked about how he had been a little bit ineffective, Reginald Davis was the intended receiver. Agba that time was very effective. And Agba actually had to push his own man out of the way. Watch him come up behind here, and he pushes his big guy, 96, Vincent Taylor, on his way to get to the quarterback. It doesn't matter to him what jersey you got. You're in his way. He's going to get you out of the way. The rumor is true. Texas Tech has a punter. First time of sighting. The first time we've seen him today. <laughs> and we're, we're just a second. Hold we're going to have to wait again. A little false start. He'll have to back it up five and get it. All star, number 37, offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. And that's Michael Barton. Now, there have been some switching in the kicking game due to injury. There was a lot of talk that. The very fine punter Taylor Simak was not going to be able to go and apparently he cannot go so Michael Barton is doing that and that may be why Clayton Hatfield is handling the place kicking. Jalen McCleskey is back deep. Big kick and it's taken at the 35 yard line by David Glidden. They had two men in that time and notice McCleskey kind of broke off in case there was a trick play. Tonight on ESPN, it's college football primetime presented by Hilton. At 7 Eastern, number 15, Michigan faces off against Minnesota. And then at 10 o'clock Eastern, 8th ranked Stanford squares off against Washington State. You can also stream live of those on Watch ESPN, actually 1030 on the game time there. But Jerry Kill's sudden retirement uh, hit the coaching community hard. And Mike Gundy knew him in high school. See the quote there on Twitter. Our profession lost one of the finest men of the game of Coach Kill. His leadership impacted the lives of so many. A self-made man with great character who climbed his way through the ranks of college football. He built his career on hard work, discipline, and his success speaks for itself. And, you know, we were all sad to hear that Jerry Kill decided to walk away. Yeah, without a doubt. We'll talk more about that in just a second as Rudolph will slide to the 41-yard line. But we've talked with Jerry Kill uh, many times. Uh, he has been successful everywhere, Southern Illinois, Northern Illinois, they won at Minnesota, and uh, one of the really honest guys you'll ever run into in this business. Yeah, and so enthusiastic and down to earth. I mean, he was everybody's friend immediately, and, and football will miss Jerry Kill, no doubt about it. But he also, based on everything that was said earlier this week, a difficult decision, but yeah, he had to do the right one, yeah. Rudolph, that's going to be complete, and a... Big tackle in the open field there by Bethel as Chris Lacey makes the grab for 10. It'll be first down for Oklahoma State. Yeah, Jerry Kill has gone through so much. He really has to focus on his health. We don't have any idea if he's watching today, but if he is, certainly a lot of uh, love from our crew to yeah. Coach Kill. Yeah, God bless you, Coach Kill. Hang in there, buddy. And, and just uh, 54 years old, too, Dave. That was uh, surprising to me. It's McCleskey on a little pitch and getting a good block, but... Sneaking behind the block and a solid smackdown by Keenan Ward, number 15. A gain of four. Could have been so much more. And this back seven for the Red Raiders are tackling extremely well. They are finishing plays and making big hits as well as tackles in the open field. Right off of the shoulder shake, and down he goes. He is swallowed up by Demetrius Alston. That's the problem with when you run the double moves. You've got to be able to protect it, and they were not able to on this particular one. Just a little 
A stunt move there, and I, I got to put that one on Chris Carson, the running back. When he steps into the hole and there's somebody in the hole, you got to get hands on that guy. Now, I know it was Lundblade, the center's man, but if there's a guy there, you got to whack him on your way out. And he did not. He just let him go. Loss of six, third down and a dozen. One to snap it. Rudolph. Right at the sticks. Boy, it's a just dime. a solid throw. And Austin Hayes with a good hands and a first down. And that, that Rudolph has a gun. And I'm watching him throw the football throughout and just really impressed. And that one is a dime right there. And that's perfect. And the timing of that route and the spacing, that was as good as you can get. 17 of 23 for 205. You can see his. Oklahoma State had their best starting field position. They've had some difficult times with that the hand off the child and he will not be able to break a persistent ankle tackle from Dakota Allen well, he had his foot in a bear trap or something there he could still got five loose he still got five child's out of Houston sharing the running back low with Chris Carson Jeff Carr and today Raymond Taylor who has a touchdown for the Cowboys there's that double move He's got a chance here. Thrown behind him, and he makes a reach around catch. Incomplete is the official ruling on the field. Brandon Shepard did not catch it, said the field judge. Said he juggled it. Yeah, and that's the, the thing. He's got to have a foot in bound with control of the football. Well, wait a minute. We've had a replay. Going on the field. It's an incomplete pass. Third down. And I don't know. That's close. It looked to me like he had actually gathered it back in, and his right foot is still. In the field of play. Rolling of an incomplete pass is under further review. I, I, you know what? After the last one that we both guessed wrong at, I'm going to sit this one out. I'm not. I'm going to tell you that's a touchdown. Uh, to me, that ball stopped um, being juggled and bobbled. He had the right hand on it and the right foot in, and he switched hands to give the, uh, you know, the one hand touchdown salute there at the end. Yeah, there was no better look than that one we just showed you right there. So you think this will be an overturn or should be an overturn and a touchdown. That's my call. That would be, by the way, the second time that has happened for Oklahoma State today. If you're just joining us, that pass to Austin Hayes was initially ruled incomplete and was overturned by the replay booth. Yeah, to me, he controlled the football with his right hand. You, I mean, you see it right there. He's got control of it. Now he switches hands, which is fine. You can mm -hmm. do that. And the ball didn't move. No. He had uh, complete control of it in the foot inbounds. After review, the receiver's right foot was down inbounds with firm control of the ball. Touchdown. There you, uh, there you have it. So for Shepard, his third touchdown catch of the season. And Oklahoma State has clawed right back into this game. They're too good of a football team to not claw their way back they, they just they keep their heads down they play for 60 minutes and that's that's how Mike Gundy coaches and they control their destiny in this playoff race and don't forget Tuesday night at 7 o'clock on ESPN you'll get that first playoff ranking coming out and well that didn't look pretty but it went in <laughs> we will step aside this is a crazy one 59 points on Halloween and love it Plenty of offense in this game, a lot of it Ray generated by one guy, Jakeem yeah. Grant. He's been unbelievable throughout this ball game. And it all started out when he caught this little route in the flat, and he had to cut three different angles because the play took so long for him to make that 90-yard reception. So he follows it up with a 100-yard kickoff return all the way to the house, and he catches another touchdown pass on the slant route. He twisted his ankle on that, but he's back in the ball game and looks no worse for wear. However, the last couple of times that OSU has kicked off, they've avoided him. It's uh, smart football. Yeah, I, I, I just can't imagine ever seeing him return a kick the rest of the day. Unless they let this go all the way to him, and that's risky too. But you know what? They're going to sacrifice their field position. Let's get back to the studio. The man who never sacrifices anything, Adnan Burke. <laughs> Master of the tosses today. Thank you very much, Dave. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, do you think Danny Cannell's a clown or Joey Galloway has a dark side? Wait until you see their outfits. Also, plenty of points being scored right now between Clemson and NC State in Raleigh. Last year when Samaj P. Ryan of Oklahoma faced Kansas, he had plenty of yards on the ground. What's happening in the encore? And for Ohio 
State. JT Barrett suspended. We'll discuss the repercussions for the Buckeyes with their game next week. All that more coming up at the half. Dave, back to you. All right. Do you think uh, Danny Cannell's a clown, Ray? Uh, when he wants to be. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Solid hit there on a short gain for Washington. Picked up two and paid for it. Yeah, Jordan Burton, the linebacker, came inside. I don't know if he's on a blitz or he just read it that quickly, but he filled that hole like a man. And had a little help on the other side, too. That was good defense. And this Oklahoma State defense is starting to batten down a little bit. That's their reputation. Under pressure, Mahomes slings it incomplete. Now that name Mahomes is starting to ring a bell. If you're a baseball fan, you know his dad, Pat Mahomes. It was a long time. He got 12 seasons in the bigs as a pitcher. All right, and initially tried to push young Patrick into baseball, but he saw how much his son loved football and how good he was at it, and he's given him his total blessing, and rightly so. Third and eight. All out blitz. Picked up nicely though, and a long throw by Mahomes is caught by Davis, and that'll be a first down at the 46-yard line, a 14-yard gain. And here is Dad, a mom, and the Twins mascot. And there's yeah. Patrick in the Rangers uniform. Patrick Mahomes Sr. spent some time at a bunch of different ball clubs. And also basketball was on the Mahomes family radar too for Patrick. And yeah. we're gonna have a timeout taken by Oklahoma State. Timeout, Oklahoma State. So both teams have used one timeout in this half with two minutes and 51 seconds left. What's been an absolutely explosive and completely fun first half here in Texas. And with 2.51 to go, both teams with two timeouts. 31-28 hour score. All of the first half, Washington checks out and Texas Tech goes empty. Awkward. Flags are down. Mahomes freebie here. He's gonna let it loose. Davis was the intended receiver, but excellent coverage by Jordan Stearns, who was just not gonna let Davis get beyond him. And Bean just jumped off sides. You were right, Dave. Free play. For the two fouls in the play, offside the defense. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 96, defense. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. And Vincent Taylor didn't pull off at the end. Cost himself uh, in the team. 15-yard penalty. Here's the end of it. And Taylor's 96 are right in front of you. And gosh. Now he didn't even hit him. It was the other guy. Yeah. I think they, it was Bean. They both got there, he, he and Bean, at the same time. I don't think it was that late. I never think it was that rough. Washington, and he gets down to the 25 yard line. And you see Taylor, number 96, in there on the tackle. That's a six yard pickup, second down and four, but it's a big break for Texas Tech to get that call. Good play by Taylor to make that tackle, but he paid for it a little bit. Mahomes. Oh, that's a beautiful, beautiful throw to Lauderdale. And it's red zone time for Texas Tech. And Trey Flowers, the safety, had difficult duty on this because he is backpedaling deep and then it's just so far away. And Mahomes puts so much zip on the ball, he doesn't have time to make up the, the difference. First and goal from the nine-yard line. Devin Lauderdale, a junior from Houston. Watch this backside. Although they went out of the press now. Pressure coming from the edge. This is Grant. Boy, he's got moves. Again, it's. Thought he was going to get in, and finally. How many Oklahoma State Cowboys does it take to trap this guy? <laughs> he gets down to the two. He is uh, just unbelievable how quick he is. It's like a water bug just skirting across the water. Makes the first man miss, and then runs into some traffic around the goal line. But he is almost impossible to lasso an open field by a single cowboy. They're saying he was down at the three, so it'll be second and goal from there. A little more beef in the backfield here for Texas Tech. Washington, did he break the plane? He's pushing hard underneath there. No signal. 
I'm going to come in and make nope. sure. Nope. There's the third make... down. Yep, right away. You see the three fingers go up for third down, but it's third in inches. But the time is running down under a minute, but Cliff Kingsbury does have the two timeouts. He'll go quickly here. As quickly as the center judge will let him. Mahomes on the sneak. He got stood up. Kept pushing. And he got in. That's where you see it, Dave. A lot of times, extra effort on that quarterback sneak. The second push gets him in and breaks the plane. Because he gets stonewalled here initially. This is where you got to have linebackers coming over the top. They did. But Mahomes with just too much push. With a little help the, from Washington. Gets the call. Watch yeah. 21 here on this. Yeah. He sees the, so he gives him a little Reggie Bush effort there and helped him out. Yeah, it's actually illegal. Not Eight. They, unless they don't call it. <laughs> Eight plays, 62 yards, and 248. <laughs> and you see right there, Oklahoma State's giving up the most points they've allowed this season. This is what Texas Tech does. They average 46.6 per game, and that's only third in the Big 12. <laughs> you know, by the end of the game, that guy's going to be doing those fake half push-ups right. that they do, you know, yeah, with the, the, the head box. But at the moment... And it partly because Patrick Mahomes is having such a big day, that guy's guns are going to be blazing. He's got accounted for four touchdowns so far. Yeah, he's been on fire. He's just ripping the ball all over the field, and then when it's time to run and, and man up, he, he has done that as well. I still go back to that, that play where he ran the football and picked up that first down by lowering a shoulder. So that, is, that inspires his teammates when a quarterback will do that for you. Be interesting to see how Mike Gundy wants to manage the time here. First off, he'll get the football at the 25 yard line. He does two timeouts and 46 seconds to go. We want you to tune in to ESPN to get ready for the NFL on Sunday, catching NFL Insider Sunday edition at 10 a.m. Eastern, and at 11 a.m. Sunday NFL countdown with Boomer and the Boys, catching both on ESPN, streaming live on Watch ESPN. And Mason Rudolph is having a pretty nice day, save for one pass that got away from him. He's got some pretty good numbers going there himself with a pair of timeouts and 46 seconds. There's no real reason they can't take a, a shot at moving this thing down the field and getting points. Plenty of time from his line. He found a little seam. Glidden will make the catch at a first down at the 45 yard line. I don't know how he weaved that pass in between three defenders, yeah. but he did. He put that through the eye of the needle right there, and I just love the way Glidden plays the game. He is a tough customer. <laughs> Take the shorter route that time, got to get out of bounds, and it is done by Chris Carson. Jima, who was knocked out of the game earlier, is back in, and number 17, and after a seven-yard pickup, it'll be second down and three. That stops the clock at 28 seconds, and Oak State still has two timeouts. Yeah, and they're, they're going to the, they're in the two-minute where you get a lot of hand signals where Rudolph is giving the routes to the receivers. Having to make an adjustment, makes a long throw, incomplete. Third down and three, 23 seconds to go. The intended receiver there, Marcel Eatman. Outstanding coverage by the back seven, actually eight. They dropped eight at the Red Raider defense. And there was nowhere for Rudolph to throw the football, and he just had to dump it out to the edge at the end. See if they bring pressure here on this one, day. And their coverage served them well in the previous one. They rush five. And he will well, that's a close call on the first down it does not get it it's fourth down and hitting on the stop and now Oklahoma State or Texas Tech who do you who has the timeout call wow with 13 seconds left it's probably a tech timeout timeout Oklahoma State or second so uh, Gundy wants a moment to think about fourth down and a yard to go we show you the big 12 standings TCU already a winner this week Baylor taking care of Iowa State Oklahoma State and Texas Tech, our teams there. Oklahoma seems to have just had that one bad day because we saw them in person demolish Kansas State. Uh, West Virginia surprising 0-4, and, and of course the two Kansas teams having a tough time of it this year. That's a, a good league this year. I think the Big 12 is up. At least uh, the top half of it is up 
big time this year. And Texas is a team, I think, you know, one of the cliches we use is the team that nobody wants to play. Right. And they clearly flushed out a lot of bad poisons when they took care of that game in Dallas against Oklahoma. And they seem to have steadied things down there and lost in just a little bit. And you got to tip your cap to the schedule makers of the Big 12 because all the important big time games are coming down this next month. Yeah, man. You look ahead for Oklahoma State. TCU coming up in Stillwater, then at Iowa State, then they finish at home against Baylor and Oklahoma. All those top teams will do a little round robin here in the final month of the season. Walsh in at quarterback. He's going to try and just get the chains moved. He'll keep it. They move the chains. First down. You take that last time out. Tackle by Jenkins. Unless they decide to well, spike yeah, it. They're going to spike it because the chain, the clock stops while the chain gang gets it set. Central judge gets out of the way. There's your spike. Ten seconds to go. Second down. That's great execution in a two-minute drill there and saving your timeout. Now the whole field is open to the Cowboys where they can try to get themselves down into field goal range and they have the timeout so they can use the middle. And Rudolph is back in. You've got to start throwing the ball deep down the field here if you're even thinking about a field goal, and he's the guy to do it. Yeah, I'd say you probably want 20 yards to give yourself a fair chance at a, a good field goal. And still have the one timeout. I think you've got to get him on this play. The middle of the field is open and is deflected. Justice Nelson, number 31, got a hand on that. The junior from Mesquite, now with five seconds to go, you're pretty much looking at Hail Mary territory here. Yeah, that's that's basically what you have left. I don't believe you can gain 20 yards on a play and get the timeout in under five seconds. That tech defense is all the way back. Inside their 10 with three safeties. Of course, you need time to execute this. He gets it toward the end zone. Big jump, and it is incomplete. Glidden had it. He had a chance at it anyway and didn't go. So we are at halftime in Lubbock. Wow. Bounced right off the receiver's hands. That, that was James Washington who went up for it, and he taps it right into Glidden. Watch number 13 there. Great leaping and timing by Washington on it, and great defense, too. And that, that ball hit Glidden right on the chest, but too fast, and it went through his hands. Oh, he knows it. Boy, nobody in the stadium feels worse than he does right now. What a crazy first half, and we've got one more to go. We will hear from Don Davenport with Coach Gundy coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report. We're 38-28. Now let's go to Adnan Verk and the gang in the studio, guys. The gang indeed. Thank you very much, Dave. The Lexus Halftime Report. Is Welcome back to Jones AT&T Stadium. You are watching ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. Oh, man, it's the Big 12 here in Lubbock. 38-28, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State. The Cowboys have never led in this game. The number 12 team in the country, unbeaten, 7-0, controlling their destiny in the college football playoff race at the moment, though. They can't stop Texas Tech. Yeah, and I... It's going to be a problem because they are playing really well. Patrick Mahomes has been outstanding, and, and and Grant, they can't stop him. So they're going to have to do something different here in the second half. But I do believe they'll be able to keep up in terms of scoring, Dave. It's been a, a track meet back and forth. This is not a day where you want to be a, a defensive coordinator or defensive coach because you are, uh, you're failing. Oklahoma State will get the football first. And after a slow start offensively, they picked it up. Texas Tech has had a tough time this year defensively, giving up 40 points a game and over 561 yards of offense on average against an Oklahoma State team that puts up 480, number 22 in the country, and here we go. And that'll be a touchback, and let's check in with the third member of our team, Don Davenport. 
Well, they are going to come out with some different looks offensively. Texas Tech head coach Cliff Kingsbury telling his defense that, telling his defense they have to be ready. His message, just hang in there, guys. Now, I asked him about Jakeem Grant's performance that half. He said they thought they had a mismatch with that linebacker there. They knew they were going to exploit that. He said they're going to continue to try and do that this second half. Grant was spectacular. He's a mismatch for anybody on the field today. See, so far, Oklahoma State, largest halftime deficit this season. So they can't erase a 10-point deficit quickly. A begin on the ground and a burst out of the backfield. Chris Carson, a little bit shy of the first down by two, a gain of eight. It'll be second down and two. And that is one thing I'm sure that Texas, or excuse me, Oklahoma State talked about at halftime, running the football. If you'd have told me they'd have been outrushed in this ball game, in the first half, I would have had a hard time believing that and giving you long odds. And I think that's why Walsh is in this game. They want to reestablish the physical nature of their football team, and you do that by running the ball. He'll hand it off on his own read. That'll be Childs close, but as you see the official come in from the top, it looks like he did not get the first down. Now, Walsh is normally the red zone quarterback for Oklahoma State. This part of the field he does not see this season or has not seen this season, but he's still out there. Yeah, he has in mop-up duty, Dave, a little bit, and, you know, they feel confident with him in there. But I, I think it's all about being physical at this point, and they want to set a tone for this second half and be more physical. That's been the issue. But this Tech defense has been up to the challenge. And Walsh is hardly a rookie. He's a redshirt senior with plenty of experience. He'll hang on to the ball here on the read, and he will get the first down. Barely, but he will. Micah Awe on the stop, senior from Arlington, Texas, number 18. Awe's had a nice ball game. He's been filling, coming downhill, and filling up the hole and stopping guys in their tracks. And Walsh going to stay out there. Yeah, and I'm not entirely surprised by this. You know, based on the previous things I talked about and being physical, I think it, it filters down to this whole offense when Walsh is in there. It's a different mindset. Raymond Taylor, number 30, who has a touchdown run, takes the tailback, and he'll take the handoff. He'll head to the edge. And he will be very close to the first down. Well, they're going to say he's a little bit short, a couple of yards. Nigel Bethel, the second on the stop. It's an eight-yard pickup for Taylor, second down and two. And the Cowboys have come out and run the ball four consecutive times here to start this second half. And it wouldn't surprise me if they ran it four more times. Well, they threw it 30 in the first half. That's way too many for what they like to do, and I think they realize that. Here comes throw number 31. Little flipper. Underthrown, and a deflection went out about 10 yards. It hit Keenan Ward, number 15, who's also played well for the Red Raiders. It'll be third and two. And they tried a little wheel route to the back, in the backfield, the tailback. And they had it beat. They had the defense beat. Just a poor throw from Walsh. Hit him in the hip. Tech defense has to be aware that Walsh is a primary running threat in this situation. Unbalanced line to the right. Whistles everywhere. Flag is down. False start, Oklahoma State. That might bring Mason Rudolph back into the lineup. Number 73, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. That's our referee, Alan Eck, and right on cue, here's Rudolph. And Victor Saleko, that left tackle, got a little case of the hiccups and went a little quickly. So now it brings up that third and call it seven, Dave, and now it's a passing down. And that's why Rudolph's in the ball game. Pressure over the top. Coming back to almost make the catch was James Washington. He adjusted beautifully to the throw, but could not hang on with Bethel and the coverage. It's fourth down. And Bethel hung in there extremely well. And the short throw, the under throw, that's sometimes the hardest one to defend. And Bethel just stuck to his technique. When the receiver's hands go up, your hands go up in between his. And odds are pretty good. That's where the ball will be. Signer into punt. 
He's really good at getting inside the 20 yard line. He's done it 16 times this season. It's one of those today. This is a line drive. Fair catch. He sticks it inside the 20 for the 17th time after a 43 yard punt. Texas Tech's been tough on offense, and you'll see him at Patrick Mahomes in a moment. Pat Mahomes has been outstanding here this afternoon. The first half lit it up. Hits his wide open receiver Stockton for the first touchdown. Finds him again on the edge for another one. And then he's got the ball zipped in there on the slant pass to Grant. And then he runs one in as well, although I'm not entirely convinced he did break the plane with that one. But an outstanding first half for Pat Mahomes. And Oklahoma State's got to find some kind of answer for him, Dave. They have not gotten much pressure on him whatsoever. No, and this is a team that came into the game second in the NCAA with 28 sacks, and they haven't put him on his back yet. A little screen here in the middle of the field, and this is Washington, and he's got beautiful moves. He'll be down at around the 38-yard line. That's a gain of 20 there, and Mahomes wants something done immediately. That was very close to that pass being beyond the line of scrimmage. It was just behind it, and that allows that offensive line to get down the field and make blocks. Mahomes, that's going to be a skipper, and it's going to be incomplete. Second down and 10. Well, here's a, a tweet from ESPN Stats and Info. In two Big 12 home games and half of the third, Pat Mahomes has 10 touchdown passes and no interceptions at home. In two Big 12 road games, he has two touchdown passes and five interceptions. So we want to thank the Stats and Info gang for that. So you're saying he's a little more comfortable at home. He likes loving, aren't we all? Little dump there, and I Grant didn't may not have been able to see the ball. I'm not entirely sure. But he had my line number 56 in there. Mote my line with a little pressure. Yeah, this is a receiver screen that, that is basically over the middle. And so that allows the other receivers to block down the field. You saw the uh, Tony Brown number eight blocking his man while the pass is thrown. But because the route is behind the line of scrimmage, that's a legal play. Oklahoma State threatened to blitz heavily and they did it out of it. They sugared up pretty good. Now they're changing. Mahomes flushed out of the pocket on the run. Pass is swatted down. And then caught by the big man. Unbelievable. <laughs> you could hear the contact. Right. And then LaRaven Clark heads up with the ball. Uh, you, you don't do many or get many of those. The touching by the offensive lineman was legal. It was touched by a defender first. And there you go. It was hit in the air by Bean. And right back to the left tackle over here. He's going to be leading this thing to the edge. He's, he senses his quarterback coming out there. And, and what do you do when the ball comes? See, grab it and run, He's big man. Run. <laughs> Tell you what, he made a move there, too. Not too bad. Now, he didn't get the first down. It's going to be fourth down and two. We have an injured player on the field for the Cowboys. I think that's Bean. Who, uh... oh, it was right in front of the sideline, and it happened right at the end of that play. We'll step aside while the Raven Clark goes in the stat book. The timeout was for Jimmy Bean, who was able to walk off with a little bit of a limp on his left leg. He was injured on that play trying to tackle the Raven Clark. In the meantime, Texas Tech, during that timeout, decided to go for it here on fourth and two, unless they are trying to sucker the Cowboys into jumping off sides. I got to think that's what they're going to do, unless they see something in this defensive alignment that they feel they can exploit. didn't he? He did. And yeah. Yeah, hey, I give you high marks for trying. And the discipline by the Cowboy defense forces the punt. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. And I like the fact that instead of burning a timeout, which would have been silly, they just take the five yards, back it up, and it doesn't change the field position all that drastically. Michael Barton, the redshirt freshman from Austin, Texas, into punt again, taking over for uh, gutsy climax. Gutsy thing to do now, Dave, would be to fake it. We're crazy. And look out! I think he did fake it. I mean, and it's not going to work. I'm not sure if that was a fake. I'm beginning no, to think I, that he I struggled agree. to handle the ball. That and I, he felt the rush coming and, and basically freaked out and pulled it down and tried to make something happen. Let's see. He had control of the football, but he sensed the rush 
coming from the Cowboys on the outside and, and he was pulled right. it down. He was absolutely right. I don't know if they can get to it. It's an all-out block from the left side. And I don't know. You got to try to kick that football. That's what they're going to tell him, and that's what you have to do. Pressure However, came in from his right side and left, and so now a huge break. Right. 35-yard line for Oklahoma State. See if they take a shot after this sudden change. Rudolph. He's thinking about it, and he will be flushed and sacked at the 44-yard line. Brought down by Pete Robertson, number 10, but a lot of pressure before that. Robertson was able to benefit. And, and it was the uh, initial pressure up the middle that really flushed him. Alston. And big man, 40 feet, three, Demetrius Alston, with that pressure, forced him into the hands of Pete Robertson. Third sack today, a loss of only eight. Going for it all. He's got a man downfield. In and out. That was a tough catch for Brandon Shepard, number seven in the shadows. And now we're starting to see some shadows creeping over the field from this 2.30 central time start. And I wonder if that affected Shepard's vision. And I don't know if Shepard continued to run on his route. It looked like he maybe uh, took a, hitched it up a little bit and didn't continue to run it out. You got to lay out for those. Third get down away. 18. That was a big opportunity. Now, do you take a try to get a medium sized chunk out of this and consider going for it if you don't get the first down? Yeah, I think you, you look deep and it's not there, then you go to that route. Rudolph's got a scramble. And that was dropped at the 19 yard line. It hit the receiver squarely in the hands. At least it looked like it did. Shepard again was the intended receiver. And it's fourth down and 18. And Texas Tech is going to survive the gap on special teams. Great job by Mason Rudolph of avoiding the pressure and throwing a dime to Shepard, who can't trust his own hands right now because it hit him right in the hands. So signer on again. Both of his punts have gone inside the 20 yard line. You've got Cameron Batson awaiting the ball for 10. Take a little something off of that. Look at that coverage team down there. The ball gets into the end zone. That'll be a touchback. And That's the player is shaking up. Off. Yep. I think that's Nick Hutchins. Uh, 16, Derek Robinson. Robinson. Well, they have two 16s. So yeah, it's either Hutch. Yeah. I think you see the back of the jersey. It's Robinson. So an awkward fall for Robertson and the trainer out to take a look at him. ESPN College Football brought to you by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA, and Dr. Pepper and College Football. It's a one of a kind tradition. Halloween in Lubbock, Texas. I'm told that downtown is going to be. A little extra crazy tonight with the students and their costumes. Should be a lot of fun. And a great football game so far. That was our halftime score, 38-28. We've actually gone a few minutes without scoring. Yeah, a few defensive adjustments at halftime have taken hold. So Patrick Mahomes will lead out the Red Raider offense again. A handoff. This is DeAndre Washington, and he is set backwards. And there is Emmanuel Ogba. Two-yard loss, second down and a dozen. And... Uh, Back, really, he ran right into his own man. That's Alfredo Morales, the left guard, who <laughs> might get an assist on that. But Agba was up in there and playing very stout along with Darion Daniels. Jimmy Bean is not back in this ball game yet. No, Jordan Brailford, number 94, is, and there's Washington. And you love the way he runs the football as he picks up 10. I do. He's he's taking this Red Raider football team and putting them on his back in uh, several instances throughout the course of this season. His grit and determination is admirable. He's a, a really a solid citizen, great student. Uh, coaches were raving about his uh, things he does off the field. Mahomes in trouble from Ogba. Ogba flushing him out. Mahomes will just get rid of it. That's the smart play. Fourth down and three coming up. 
Well, Washington is the first running back since the Texas Tech Ricky Williams in the late 90s with 1,000 yards. The yard the pass, therefore, there is no foul for intentional grounding. It's fourth down. And he is now, Washington has reached number six all time on the Texas Tech rushing yards list. Boy, Agba had a really nice inside rush on that last one, Dave. He's been coming outside, 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 and then he switched it up, came inside, had instant pressure. Low and short kick. Very tempting, and it's going to be returned. This is McCluskey. Here we go. And he's got some room. McCluskey with a very nice move. Has a lot of blockers down in front of the sideline. Needs one more block. He'll cut back and score. Well, a lot of times when the ball bounces on the ground, it changes angles for the coverage team, and some of them slow up. And this one bounces, he fields it on the first hop, and he gets a key block on the peel back right there and then races to the edge, and he's got a convoy. <laughs> Look at that, four blockers out in front leading the way for McCleskey heading to the end zone. So we've had each team with a special teams touchdown. 67 yards in that return by Jalen McCluskey. And How about Oklahoma that? State is pulled to within three. Just like that. Big play on special teams can change the whole tone of a ball game. It's been that kind of game? Yeah, right? It's just, I'm not surprised to see this kind of craziness. Tennis match going back and forth. Well, for Oklahoma State, this is an opportunity for their fans and the community of Stillwater and all the Oklahoma State fans around the country to just take a little bit of a break while the events of last week are still hanging in their hearts and minds a little bit. For more on that and for more on Mike Gundy's reaction, let's go to the field and Don Davenport. Yeah, guys, you know, Coach said that he was much more open and honest with his players when talking about this tragedy. He's actually spent the last six months really studying mental health, how we as humans deal with challenges. He's become friends with a doctor. Dr. Morali Krishna, who is the head of mental health at a hospital in Oklahoma. And he said his studies, his talks with that doctor have really helped him in addressing his team. He told their guys there are no answers to some events in life. Initially, he said he knew he had to help them clear their heads. So that study, the last six months that he's been doing, has really helped him to deal with his players and with this tragedy. And on also his players and other athletes in Oklahoma, most notably Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant, going to the hospital to visit the victims of this accident on homecoming where a car went into the crowd killing four injuring about four dozen others on the homecoming parade the largest homecoming parade in the country here is jakeem grant oh my gosh these moves of his are absolutely unfathomable and unpredictable even though he will get to the 23 yard line he might spend his i wish you could track his actual yardage as the ankle that he Heard in the first half, looks like it bothered him a little bit. But the actual yardage that he truly runs as opposed to statistical yardage. Yeah, he's covering some yards, no doubt. And he threw it in reverse there. My, my transmission broke down just watching <laughs> it. <laughs> the backing camera on his helmet actually kicked into effect. You see what he's done so far today. He had a first quarter 210 total yards, the best in FBS this season. Yeah, it was amazing. But he is, you can see, a little bit gimpy on that ankle that he hurt on a touchdown grab earlier in the ball game. Justin Stockton joins DeAndre Washington in the backfield. He'll get it, number four. Broke one tackle, broke two tackles, but not tackles three and four. He was slowed down before Michael Hunter, number 17, smacked him down after a two-yard pickup, second and eight. Stockton showed some real power in that and some some want to Dave because he did he shook off several guys that should have been a loss of a yard or two out of that empty backfield Mahomes gets rid of it long throw and it's caught by Cameron Batson. Pick up three there, though. Third down and five. Jordan Burton playing uh, the flat from his linebacker position, closed immediately and made a nice open field tackle to limit that game. Third down and five on the 29 yard line. Another empty formation. And Oklahoma State has been rushing three against this. Texas Tech has had two chances on third down in this half, and they have missed them both. 
Mahomes taking off. Look out, Hogba just jumped up and swallowed him. Hogba's got some springs in his legs, and he basically rushed the edge with a speed rush and then falls back into it. There he is. He's going to come around the edge and then fall back into it once the quarterback, Mahomes, gets flushed. Speed rush initially, but he's relentless. He will not stop or slow down. And when he gets to the point of attack, look out. And the punt is, man, a punt for Texas Tech has become a scary adventure. That's a short kick. And out of bounds where Oklahoma State will have very tasty field position at about the 36 yard line. So Michael Barden, who's filling in. For Taylor Simak, the fine Texas Tech punter, has had a difficult time. 37 yards on that punt. Well, we got a good one for you Monday night. A couple of former first overall picks. Andrew Luck and Indianapolis going into Charlotte, taking on the Cam Newton led Panthers, who are off to a fabulous 6 0 start. Coverage begins with Monday night countdown at 6 Eastern, streaming live on Watch ESPN. And in the 2011 season, Oklahoma State bumped into Andrew Luck in the Fiesta Bowl and beat him. And nothing there at all. We take a look at these two quarterbacks on the air. Completion percentage the same. Injury timeout. And that surprises me that they're both down there in the mid 50s with those completion percentages. That, that is not uncommon for Newton with the offense they run. But luck, he's got to be up in the in the mid 60s for them to be effective. We have the trainers out on the field to take a look. At Keenan Ward, hard hitting safety for Texas Tech. And the good news is always when he's able to get up under his own power. Ward's played very well today. And several open field tackles. And not afraid to hit. Did not see what happened to him. It was away from the play. Second and 11. Rudolph ducked out of there, but Demetrius Alton, number 43, has been a disruptive force from that defensive tackle position. Picked up two, third down and nine coming up. Good coverage in the secondary for Texas Tech. They played cover two. They had two safeties over the top, and there was nobody open, nowhere to go with the ball for Rudolph. And remember, they're playing without Deshaun Johnson, the starting free safety, who was ejected on a targeting call in the first half. He's Place being taken by number 24, Peyton Hendricks. <laughs> Pressure from Tech, but Rudolph hangs in, lobs it, incomplete. Chris Lacey from Shadow to Sunlight, fourth down and nine. And this is a, a play where they, they check to it. It's an automatic because he has pre he has press coverage and he wins right off the bat. But the ball is underthrown a little bit. But that's got to be caught, man. That's another one that dropped in there. Yeah, there's been three or four in this half that Oklahoma State receivers have just had a tough time hanging on to, and they could change the course of this ball game. Catch made for and caught at the 26 yard line. Decent field position here as Batson able to look into that sun after a 36 yard punt. We bring you the Capital One College Football Rankings and Ray. This will be the last time this season we use the AP Top 10. Right, coming up Tuesday, you know, get the committee together and they'll take care of that business. And you see, everybody looks pretty good as the way things are going right now. And You've got five teams in that top 10 with a bye this week, gearing up for that final run through November in the first week of December. And just outside of that top 10, Oklahoma State, ranked number 12 in the AP poll, trying to get to 8 and 0. It'll be the third time in their history. They did it in 1945, they did it in 2011. They had trouble finishing some of those seasons. The great starts. Mahomes deep down the field, incomplete, second and 10. That's just good coverage down there by Stearns. He just basically got his body in the way of the receiver trying to look for the ball without using his hands and pushing anybody. It's good defense. Mahomes 
again. Got rid of it quickly. Wide open is the receiver and into Oklahoma State territory is Ian Sadler. Down it around the 40 or 41 yard line. First down for the Red Raiders. And that's really on the safety flowers. He did not get over fast enough to make the close and the play. As you see, it's just the safety and the receiver running down the field. And another explosive play to the total. That was 31 yards. Here's Grant out in open space. And this time he is tossed down. It didn't take Trey Flowers long to contain Grant, which is hard to do. It's just a gain of three. Yeah, what you have to do with a guy as quick as Grant is take away one of his options. So you got to balance it out to where you're on one side of him and force him back, preferably inside where you have help coming. Pressure up the middle, flushing out Mahomes on the run. Hit the receiver, the defender, I should say, in the back, Kevin Peterson. And the now crowd. remember, well, go ahead. I know what you're going to say, probably the same thing I was. Go well, ahead. Yeah, they want pass interference because Peterson never got his eyes back around. But he, what he did do is not make contact until the ball hits him. Peterson is still down. That's an awkward bend on his neck for one thing. Now remember, in college football, there's no face guarding penalty. In the NFL, they probably would have tossed a flag there. And Peterson now being looked over by the train. He's sitting up. And now being helped up. So he'll, he looks like, well, hopefully he'll be able to come back. But uh, that defensive play makes it 37 for Texas Tech. I'm a red After tonight's Pac 12 showdown between Stanford and Washington State, keep it locked to Sports Center at night. Catch highlights from the day in college football, plus a full recap from Game 4 of the World Series. It's Sports Center at night following Stanford and Washington State on ESPN and, of course, streaming live on Watch ESPN. Maybe you're getting back from a Halloween party. You want to see what you might have missed? We see our two quarterbacks today. They've been fabulous. Yeah, they really have. And we've had some drop footballs, or those percentages for the completions would be up even higher than that. And I think the second half, Dave, the defenses have made adjustments and they have turned out to be fruitful thus far. So third down and seven uh, facing Patrick Mahomes, the sophomore from White House, Texas. Our game presented by Cars.com today here at Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock. I'm Dave Lamont, Ray Bentley with me upstairs, Don Davenport patrolling the sidelines, and it's just been a beautiful day here. Now one of the things Coach Kingsbury talked to us about was trying to wear out the Oklahoma State defense. They were pretty tired in that first quarter running around, but they look like they're no worse for wear here in the second half, at least yet. Mahomes. Drifted that arm back about three times before he finally found Grant. They're going to be short. Yep, the line judge is going to mark him down, but it's really close. So you got to think fourth down going forward is right on the table here. Yeah, but it's not a strength of this football team in terms of grinding out tough yards. And so we'll see what they come up with. But I, I definitely think you have to go for it in this situation. They bring in 35, Tyler Scalzi, so and they'll have Mahomes go under center. They're going to hold it until Oklahoma State gets their substitutions in. That's right. That's only fair. Texas Tech subbed in. Four to snap it. Timeout, Texas Tech. Ran out of time. So earlier we mentioned the targeting call that went against Texas Tech's Deshaun Johnson. We didn't care for the call. We had a long talk. I don't know if you did. I know I did with Don Caprell, the replay official. So let's go back and take a look at the play. And Don explained the reason for the targeting, why the call on the field of targeting was upheld. And basically a couple things came into play, Dave. Uh, number one, the the hit was above the shoulders that was his rule and you know the head and neck area you can't hit that and then he also said that because the pass was dropped you have a defenseless ball player as opposed to a ball carrier and those two factors kind of led well and that's the reason that they called this a targeting here's a look at it now the defenseless thing I understood although it's happened so quickly that was the one I asked him about that he said it doesn't matter even if it happens quickly, if he's defense, if he doesn't have the ball, he's not a ball carrier, and he becomes defenseless. Yes, Fumble by Mahomes on fourth down. No matter what, it's going to be Oklahoma State football. And they never 
hardly ever go under center, and that becomes the issue. You know, just that quarterback center exchange, and that's where they blew it. And you don't get all the reps, you know, when you're out of that shotgun so much of the time, and then you want to go underneath there to try and get a sneak or a, you know, a running play up the gut, and the quarterback's not used to being under there. That's what can happen. So turnover. Either way, either on downs, it doesn't matter who recovered the football, really. So the 34-yard line, the Cowboys will take over. They have never led in this game. And they have an opportunity to tie or go in the lead on this drive. Plenty of time for Rudolph. And another hit in the hands and drop as we go to Adnan Burke, who never drops the ball in the studio. Dave, I'm telling you, I am blushing all day here. Clemson and NC State, Deshaun Watson, what a game. Goes to Zach Brooks here, 35-yard touchdown. Five total touchdowns for Watson, fourth straight game of the touchdown for Brooks. They're up by 20 and he's pinned too. Dave? All right, Anna, thank you very much. Meantime, Rudolph is 0 for 5 in this half, but not all his fault. Walsh is back in at quarterback, and a handoff to Carr, and Carr's a speedster for Oklahoma State. He'll get it to midfield and a first down after a gain of 15. Yeah, and we're talking to Mike Yursich, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma State. He said he really loves the way Jeff Carr runs the zone play, and the way he makes that cut, he's just got a knack for it. Carr again, stutter step. Hit from behind, no gain, maybe even a loss of a yard that time. Keenan Ward is back into the game, and Dakota Allen, number 40, player you've identified as having a good game for the Red Raiders in there. And this, this is just a good defense. They tried to run the exact same play, only to the other side, and got a different look on defense and a couple of unblocked players, including Ward. So second down and 10 coming up. Quick throw for the Texas Tech sideline. A new game, nothing there. Bethel and Ward again. The ball popped out, but I believe I heard the whistle to mark the player down, James Washington. That looks like no gain, so we'll call it third and ten. And don't be surprised if Mason Rudolph comes back out to handle this yep. due to a passing situation. You know what I haven't seen in this half that I can remember? Are those slant patterns that were working for Oklahoma State in the first half. Right, the uh, little pop passes where they get uh, fake the play action and hit the inside cutting routes right on the hashes. That's where Glidden, number 13, has made his living for Oklahoma State this season. We'll see now what yeah, yeah. Rudolph does. Has time. Goes the other way and a fine catch by Washington. And he's dragging some defenders for extra yardage. He'll get down to the Texas Tech 28. And a first down before Ward and hauled him out of bounds. Great protection allowed uh, Mason Rudolph to step up into the pocket and survey the whole field. I believe that was his third option on this one. And because of the protection, he was able to get over to it. And then a really nice grab with Washington using the hands on a low outside ball. And J.W. Walsh is back in a quarterback for Oklahoma State. Now under two minutes in this third quarter. Handoff, Carr. Nice burst in the middle of the field. Bouncing off Ward. Carr make that number 30. Raymond Taylor, it's 30, not 20. No matter what, it's a touchdown. And Oklahoma State will have their first lead of the ball game. And just a missed tackle in the hole, really. A defender dove down to the ground, and that's what got uh, Taylor into that second level. He has two touchdowns today. And he wasn't even on our depth chart walking in. He will be for the next team that gets him. Fourth touchdown run of the year for Taylor. Six plays, 66 yards, 217. And the Cowboys with a minute and 49 to go in the third quarter and charged into the lead. And watch the linebacker Hinton right here. He's going to step up into the hole and then he just whips on the tackle. He drops his head and just goes to the ground. You got to keep your feet running and get your head across the bow. That was their chance to stop that play because once Taylor got into that secondary, he was not going to be denied. Go ahead. Ward run into another defender, a little Keystone Cops action, picking each other off. 
Texas Tech has had two 17 point leads in this game 17 0 and 24 to 7 but in this quarter the Cowboys have outscored the Red Raiders 14 to nothing and their defense they being the Cowboys has been outstanding here pitching a shutout so far in this second half and you know after giving up 38 in the first uh, a unit like that that plays extremely well and is very well coached by Glenn Spencer I'm sure they got the riot act read to them at halftime and they have responded. They're going to kick it deep and it's going to be a touchback this time. So tonight Saturday night football presented by Walmart on ABC number nine Notre Dame taking on number 21 Temple. It's Notre Dame and Temple tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. It's going to be a good ball game tonight. Yeah, you like the Owls. I do. I, I really have a lot of respect for Matt Rule, their head coach, and Phil Snow, their defensive coordinators, like a mad scientist slash football philosopher. And they run all kinds of different things on defense, uh, very multiple in the things they do. And they'll set things up for all kinds of different guys to make plays. That's Sadler in motion. Sadler stayed in the block as Mahomes goes for it all. Middle of the field into double coverage. Trying to get it to Devin Lauderdale. It'll be second down and 10. Took that deep shot on first down again, and that's one of the issues with Tech here in the second half. A lot of first down shots deep, and they're not hitting on them, and now all of a sudden you're behind the chains at second and 10, and that lets this pass rush get it going a little bit, and they have picked up the pace in terms of getting after the quarterback here in the second half. Mahomes gets the ball out quickly. Sadler on the grab at the 30-yard line. So it's a six-yard pickup here, maybe the 31. Here comes a gigantic third down and four. And Texas Tech, Ray, 0 for 4 in this half on third downs. Yeah. And look at these numbers, Dave. First half, second half. And then the average per play in the first half, 8.7. Second half, less than half that at 4.2 per play. Pressure here up the middle. The Holmes hung in there nicely, and Sadler had won a fantastic tackle in the open field by Mytavius Jones, number 24, the redshirt senior, in his fourth down. And the thing Jones did was he kept his feet running. A lot of times, guys will let their legs go dead upon impact, but he got a couple of little, little steps in there. Watch, they go dead there, and then he drags him in again and makes a tackle, doesn't allow any further progress after the initial contact. This punt has been uh, interesting, let's say, for Tech here in the second half. They had to call one off, basically. They had one returned on him, and now they are faking it. Barton takes off. Can he get to the sticks? He can do more than that. First down, Texas Tech. Well, they had trouble kicking it, so they went to the fake. And this is a great job of getting the edge. And watch this guy right here. His eyes do not stay with the kick. And that becomes a problem. And that, that's Flowers on the edge. And he's got to have contained first. And he got his eyes in the wrong spot. And Barden was able to get him on it. He runs for 11. And it brings back the Texas Tech offense. And that probably will be the end of the third quarter. Boy, we set up for a big finish here. <laughs> well, let's see if Mahomes. Mahomes going to snap it with two seconds to go. Hands off to Washington, and that will now be the end of the quarter. It'll be second down for Texas Tech. These teams don't have to go very far to swap ends. What a finish we're in for here. Oklahoma State consistent through three quarters. Texas Tech, they're... Offense has been slowed by the Cowboys defense. We start the fourth here. This is ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com at Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. And the Red Raiders in a home black with a red trim ready to go on second and eight. The homes in the face of a ton of pressure misses the pass third down and eight. Real nice coverage by Stearns down the field but the pressure is starting to mount. 
in terms of this pass rush coming on the outside. Let's meet at the quarterback. A couple of nice plays right there from this Oklahoma State defense, which has risen up here in the second half. Oklahoma being held a little bit there and back. In the meantime, it's underneath the Sadler, and he'll get inside the 30 to the 28 yard line. That's Mahomes extending a play with his feet and keeping his eyes down the field, got flushed and still was able to make that throw to a wide open receiver cutting across the field. They mark him down on the 29, wholesale substitutions here for the Cowboys defensively, but because Texas Tech substituted, you see that center judge waiting for Oklahoma State to match. Trying to keep the defensive line fresh here. <laughs> Washington bounces it outside, cut back in, and get to the 26. Tackle made by Trey Flowers. That was a really nice lateral cut by DeAndre Washington as a defender came clean off the edge and basically whiffed. That was Jordan Burton, the outside linebacker, who's wondering where DeAndre Washington went. Keen Grant. Back where he started. Mahomes. He's a good runner. And he'll should have the first down unless they mark him out of bounds shy of the stick. Yeah, he's all fired up, too. And it is indeed a first down. Seth Jacobs ran him out. 18 yard line. Another example of what Mahomes can do with the legs. You know, we talked to Coach Kingsbury and he said he's as healthy as he's been with a knee injury and he's displayed that today. They had about eight to ten planned runs called for him. That one didn't look like a planned run. The handoff there to Washington for a short gain sets up second down at about seven. This is a, an offense that's in constant motion. All led by Mahomes getting guys lined up correctly and then getting it up, throwing it out. That's nearly a lateral. Waterman will be brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 20 yard line and a good play in the open field by Ramon Richards. Well, Mahomes really has not been a quarterback all that long in his life. Either. Right, started as a junior in high school. That's when he started playing the quarterback position. When you look at it, just a sophomore here in college, he doesn't have a whole depth of experience. Hasn't been one of these guys going to the Manning Passing right. Academy or a lot of these other places. That may change. Probably will. But he does love the fact that Cliff Kingsbury is his quarterback coach. Off the back foot, gets it off in time to Sandler, fighting for the pylon. Touchdown! We'll take another look at this, as is the replay booth next to us. Yeah, it looks to me that, that you hit the pylon with the ball. That's a touchdown. He got it inside there. The pylon sits out of bounds, but you get it on the inside of it, and all you got to do is break that plane and make sure his legs are still in bounds. And I don't see any evidence that they were out. That should be a touchdown. Side judge is right there. You see him signal touchdown. He clobbered that pylon. It's a 12 <laughs> plays, 75 yard drive, and 409. If this holds up. It is under further review, understandably. Well, all plays are reviewed, and some of them get a little extra attention, as is this one. And DeAndre Washington gets a big assist in this play for his pass protection. He picked up the blitz that was coming that allowed Mahomes to make this throw. That looks like six to me. It's interesting. We've had this will be the third touchdown that has been re-reviewed. You see, there's no part of his body that hits out of bounds. He's on top of the arm of the defender here. And which, inside the pylon, too. Exactly. The and yeah. so that's that's a touchdown. This might be quick. Don Capril, Capril, pardon me, getting more pub today than any game we've had him a couple of times this year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we never even mentioned his name, but more than he wants. Yeah. So those guys prefer to remain anonymous and, yes, they and not do. have to do a, do anything yeah. to affect the ball game. Now, the longer it takes, then you start to wonder because then you start getting into issues about clock, placement of the football, and all of that. Now here clock is not an issue. The placement of the ball would be if he is ruled to not have scored. Yeah, from every look that we've seen thus far, Dave, I can't see anything 
in terms of indisputable video Four evidence that changed confirmed. Touchdown. Yep, they do. Took his extra time with it. Nothing wrong with that. And Texas Tech charges back into the lead. And that drive was all about Pat Mahomes avoiding rush, extending plays, and then finding guys down the field. And that for Texas Tech is a long drive. And let's not forget Michael Barton with a fake punt. That's really the, the big play that made that thing happen. So, how does Mike Gundy's team respond? We're going to find out here in a moment when he sends out, well, one of his two quarterbacks, Rudolph or Walsh. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. And what's really cool about that is at 7 o'clock Eastern on Tuesday night, we're going to find out the front four. And the first of the polls of the committee locks themselves down in Dallas, now just a few hours away from here in Lubbock. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's interesting. I was listening to game day this morning, and they were talking about Ohio State was ranked 16th last year at this in this particular week of the season. And of course, we all know they ended up winning the championship. Out of bounds kickoff will give Oklahoma State some good field position at the 35-yard line. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Receiving team will take possession at the 35-yard line. First down. Now let's get to the studio and Adnan Verk. All right, Dave, thank you very much. Just want to update you with what's happening with Maryland and Iowa. 24-7 for the Hawkeyes, and Perry Hill's picked out by Desmond King, who is going to go all the way. 88 yards as Iowa right now is leading at 31-15. It's on ESPN2, just over three minutes left in this one. Also, coming up next, former Hawkeye Jake Rudock of Michigan take it on Minnesota under 30 minutes away. Dave? All right, Adnan, thank you very much. Be really curious to see how Minnesota handles the last few days and the, what the approach they take. Walsh on the zone re takes off. Walsh is nobody in the picture. And he will get dragged down right at the goal line. He's going to be ruled down at the one. Touchdown saving tackle by Tevin Madison. And that is the, the thing about Walsh and the, that zone read. They keep pounding it, the yard here, yard there, and all of a sudden somebody overruns it and he pops it through the other end. They're going to mark him down in between the one and the two, so we'll make it a 63-yard run. Remember, he's the red zone specialist. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, well, now he'd be in the game. He got to the red zone. He stays in. He may keep it again. I think he got in. He, he did. did. So that's two plays, two runs, same guy. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. They go back out in front. I like the patience that he displays. Uh, holding on to the ball. Let that blocking get all set up. Find your seam and then go ahead and put your head down and get yourself into that end zone. And that's what Walsh does extremely well. J.W. Walsh has had seven touchdowns accounted for the last two games. He punches one in there. 36 seconds, two plays by the same player. Uh, you wondered if they were going to answer, Dave. Oh, I believe they did. Boy. 94 points over everybody's expectations. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And Pizza Hut. Experience the flavor of now by ordering at PizzaHut.com. It's the Big 12, man. What's the line from the movie Chinatown? Forget it, Jake. It's Chinatown. All right. Forget it, defensive coordinators. It's the Big 12. 49-45, Oklahoma State over Texas Tech. Texas Tech had led the entire ball game until the minute 50 in the third quarter. Since then, we've had three lead changes, and we darn well may have some more. Yeah, if I were a wagering type individual, I'd take that one. I believe we will have a few more points. Uh, and certainly, it could be on special teams. We've had a special teams touchdown for each team today, but not even Jakeem Grant's going to run that one out. 
So let's go back to what worked so well for J.W. Walsh setting up the touchdown. Yeah, a couple things to look at. Watch this offensive line down block and just create a tremendous seam. And then the corner over here, he's going to overrun the ball. This is Justice Nelson, who's not used to playing inside on these type of plays. So you get that wall, that moving wall that clears things out, creates the lane for Walsh. And then the defender who shows up into it overruns it. And Walsh, with a quick cut, runs north and south. And that set up his touchdown run the following play. Six rushes, 75 yards in the TD. Three passes, 19 yards. He might still be just a touch gas. Meantime, after the touchback, 25-yard line for the Red Raiders. And Patrick Mahomes, who's been great, flips it out to Grant. Grant got a block he needed. This will be 30. And this time they were waiting for those extra steps he takes. And as you can see, the Jordan Burton, number 20, emphatically happy about making that tackle after a three-yard gain. Yeah, you mentioned that block. Batson did a really nice job of pinning Burton inside. And Burton ends up coming off and making a play. It was blocked initially. Yeah. Oh, and a late hit. Yeah, that is absolutely going to be flat. And it's Taylor. It's like Vincent Taylor, the nose tackle who would make a case that he couldn't stop. He had all that bulk moving too fast. Body to try to stop, but he was, he was uh, well, yeah. well out of After bounds. the play was over. There's no doubt about it. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 96, defense. 15-yard penalty, of course, at the end of the run. Automatic first down. Yeah, you got to know where you're at on the field. And the, the big guys, they don't get to that edge very often. And I, I think that's part of the deal of him just not quite understanding exactly where he was on the football field and he wants to finish every play and that one he just overfinished it. Not overly utilized either team today. Five for 42 against Oklahoma State, five for 31 against Texas Tech. The Holmes. Nicely done there to dump it off. That is Sadler and he gets hit. Inside Oklahoma State territory by Trey Flowers at the 38-yard line at Mahomes. This game isn't moving fast enough for him. And Chad Whitener had the coverage on the receiver. And what he did is he left his receiver to go stop the quarterback at the edge. That's a cardinal sin. Three receivers at the top of your screen. It'll be a handoff. Washington pumps through, makes a sweet spin move, and he will get to the 30-yard line. Here's what I was talking about a play ago. You're going to see the linebacker, 45, running across this, the field. He's got his man. He's got to stay with his man and let someone else take care of the quarterback on the edge. Mahomes going to run again. Slides that time. Short of the first down. And we're going to have an Oklahoma State player can't get off the field. I'm going to tell you, a healthy it's Patrick retired. Mahomes is a, a way different deal because he extends plays he's a running threat and that's where a lot of the tech success has come here in the second half him being able to move around and allow his receivers to come open yeah Mahomes again we mentioned that he was a baseball player a basketball player his dad of course pitched in the major leagues for a dozen seasons and, and Don this experience in football is still fairly new for him Hey guys, yeah, it is uh, fairly new for him. You know, he did, didn't take court to the liking of being a quarterback until his junior year in high school. So, you know, nowadays all these quarterbacks spend time with individual coaches. They spend time at camps. Mahomes never did that. So he said he still learns every single day. He called Cliff Kingsbury the best quarterback coach in the entire country. He spends a lot of time with him in the film room. Well, Kingsbury was at one time a Heisman Trophy candidate late in his career here at Texas Tech. Mahomes going for it all there. Bad throw, intercepted. Boy, did we ever jinx him. The interception made by Michael Hunter is second on the season. And now a flag comes in way behind the play at the 39-yard line. Mahomes was trying to get the football to Grant once again. They were not on the same page. Mahomes threw it to a spot he thought Grant would be at, and Grant was thinking something else, and it falls right into the hands of a happy waiting Michael Hunter. They weren't in the same library on that one, unfortunately, for Texas Tech. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit, number 90, at the intercepting team. At the distance to the goal from the end of the return, first down. That's Trace Clark, who came in for Jimmy Bean. 
So that will be bad field position for the Cowboys, but they will at least have the football. And the story is written right there all over the face of Pat Mahomes, who he knows that was one he probably should have thrown up into the stands. So the ball will be at the seven yard line, one of the few remaining patches of sunlight we have here. And that's Walsh at quarterback again. Yeah, and I think it's a good call to do that. Backed up here. You don't want to take any chances. Put your running quarterback in and see if you can recapture the success of the previous drive. They'll hand it off. Running right up the gut and pushing and shoving and fighting for every yard. And a first down is Raymond Taylor. Uh, Michael Wilson, the uh, left guard, gets an assist on this one because he, he got knocked to his feet but got back up and then pushed that pile an extra five yards. And it tells me they're going to run the football when that tackle is that far up on the line of scrimmage. Again. And again, Taylor running tough right off the center, basically. That's about eight more yards, maybe seven here. So going to be second down and three. Over 1,000 yards in total offense, 94 points, 47 first downs. And you get in the red zone, you are scoring a touchdown. That's all there is to it. And the huge difference for this Oklahoma State offense is they've been able to run the ball here extremely well in the second half. Now, Taylor does have some experience. He's averaged seven and a half yards per carry in five games this year. He'll stay in here on this little reverse. This is Washington. Walsh didn't get the block, but Washington didn't need it. There's nobody in front of him. Washington, he will go all the way. Well, he pulled away like Usain Bolt in the last 20, 30 yards of a 100-meter dash. 75 yards and it's a 10 point lead for Oklahoma State and you mentioned that block by Mahomes and you know or excuse me uh, by the quarterback and he missed he whiffed but it was enough to slow the defender down and it just it created the opportunity this game has explosive plays left and right 14th touchdown today and Oklahoma State now enjoys their largest lead of the game, a double-digit advantage. And check out the quarterback, Walsh. He's going to make a, a block there and then down the field, another block by a tight end, and that's all they needed. And how about Washington? Off to the races. The numbers don't lie in this case. 56-45, Oklahoma State 14 in each quarter. we got a long way to go. In this quarter, they've had their two longest running plays of the season. Walsh at 60, what, 66, 67 yards on the 64. And then that one there, the reverse by Washington, 75. So they've had their two longest run plays of the season in one quarter, and there you see the effect they've had in this game. All right, nearly five times as many rush yards here in the second half as they had in the first half, and that spells the difference on three less carries. And they turned that interception, that turnover, into seven points. They had to go 92 yards on that drive because of the penalty, and we will step aside and make room for Adnan Verk. Well, thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. Just want to let you know, Jim Harbaugh in Michigan coming up versus Minnesota. 7-10 is the kickoff of that game. But it'll start on ESPN 3 with a win tonight. Michigan will surpass its win total from all of last season. I think Harbaugh wants to get in the game itself. And also Greg Ward for Houston. 25 total touchdowns this season. That game coming up on ESPN 2 just about five and a half minutes from now. Dave Ray, back to you guys. All right, Adam, I don't not one bit surprised about Harbaugh, and he's good for about one snappy per game, too, that'll be a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> Mahomes takes off. And not even thinking about sliding. He led that time with his head and shoulders, not his feet. He picks up a dozen in a first down. And he's an entirely different quarterback than what I saw on film with that knee healthy now, Dave. He's just so explosive running the football and extending plays and making things happen with his legs. Remember, it's Cliff Kingsbury, the head coach, who calls the plays. He's just reading those big signs that so many teams are using now. Mahomes, you were looking at him earlier. 
Pump once, throws, caught. Sadler to the 45 yard line, wrapped up there by Flowers. That's eight yards, second down to two. One of the things that uh, I, I don't know if I like it or what, but watch the body position of Mahomes when he throws this football. He's wide open already. He uses no hips or body whatsoever. That's all arm, but yet he's very good at it. And I think that has a lot to do with his baseball background. To the 45-yard line, the 50, and going into the 46-47-yard line is Grant. Patrick Mahomes played baseball. Dad was in the majors. Pat Mahomes, for years, is a reliever. Had over 40 wins in his major league career. You know, a lot of times, too, Dave, when he throws those balls out to the edge quickly like that, he does not have the laces. Um, that's Why is that significant? Well, it's harder to throw a football without the laces, and that's what a quarterback is comfortable with. But it takes a little while to spin that ball and find them with your fingers. And it, you don't have that time in this type of offense where they want to get rid of that ball as quickly as possible. It's Washington. We'll get to the 41. Chad Whitener, number 45, playing in place of Ryan Simmons, the Oklahoma State coaching staff talking about, and the Texas Tech coaching staff talking about what a key injury that was that hurt the Cowboys in that middle linebacker position. But Whitener has played well. He's a redshirt sophomore, number 45. Yeah, making his third start. And one thing he does is he knows this defense inside out. Mahomes in big trouble here, but he gets out. On the run, incomplete 30 yard line. Third down coming up. And that one just got away from a little bit. Trying to throw it on the run is a difficult task sometimes. But boy, he shook a couple of defenders, left them laying on the ground. Got to think this is go for it on fourth territory, unless there's a major loss here on third and five. Yeah, double digit deficit, definitely. He's in the homes on third down, though, it's been sparkling. A lot of times they like to go to the back side, one receiver side. Quick throw. First down. Zach Austin just runs a little hitch route. Just basically, they call that hits the sticks. And you got third and five or so. You run out six, seven yards, turn around, show the quarterback your numbers, and he gets it out on time. Austin's got that big club on his left hand. It makes it sometimes difficult to catch a football. off to Washington and you can see he got hit a couple of times. Whitener slowed him down, number 45. And then finishing him off was Emmanuel Agba. Yeah, Agba's relentless. He is a, an amazing football player who, you know, not only does he have all those explosive attributes, but he's a technician. His hand placement and his uh, attention to detail and responsibilities and the things that he does, that's why he's going to be a number one draft pick in, in play on Sundays. Six tackles. He has a sack. He leads the Big 12 in sacks. He was fifth in the NCAA. Mahomes held on to that late, but he made a nice move to get to the gap, and he'll get to the 21 the online, maybe even a 20. And that will move the chains one more time for a Red Raider first down. And Whitener was the one responsible for quarterback on this one, and he did not stay home and ends up letting Mahomes get around that edge. 10 rushes, 51 yards for Mahomes. Ninth play of the drive. Fake one way, go to Grant. He's got great moves. What a tackle. What a tremendous close by Trey Flowers. And this is a nice little tunnel screen where you're going to give him a misdirection looking one way and then come back the other way. I and mean, if you want to get the ball to a guy in open field, it's got to be Grant. Uh, it looked like Burton got away with a, a, a trip attempt as he shot the leg out to try and tackle Grant with a leg. Second and six. Empty backfield set for Mahomes. Gets rid of it. Quickly to Grant. Grant down to the six, maybe even the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal, Texas Tech, this, under six minutes. Dave, this is really good by Mahomes because he was looking to the left side all the way and at the last second went back, and I believe it was his third choice, third option is his progression when he's reading this thing, and off balance still was able to throw a strike to Grant on the back side. And off. Washington breaks through one. 
slowed down and got an extra couple of yards just on sheer determination. And those are the kind of runs that make me really like the way DeAndre Washington plays football because he will not ever give up. He keeps fighting and battling and guys think, think that he's down and he's not and he keeps digging. Washington into the end zone. Guns up, Texas Tech. Now at 56 51 here, partner. What about trying to get two here? Yeah, I think they will. I don't like to go for two unless it's to win the ball game. However, under five minutes left, then yeah, you want to see if you can get yourself within a field goal. And that's what they uh, they put out the kicking team. But well, look how unprepared this is. Unless they're the greatest actors in the world, they're going to have to burn a timeout. And that's unfortunate, and, and, and a, uh, basically a coaching error. I mean, you have to have timeout. Texas Tech, the second charge of the second half. You have to have thought that out ahead and had that discussion during this drive. All right, if we score, what are we going to do? And then you you are ready right away to pull that trigger and go ahead and do it. And they were not prepared and and end up burning a timeout in order to get the the group on the field that they want. Well, the kicker, and you're right, the, 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 the holder has his knee down. He's actually waiting for a snap. Meantime, Mahomes was a third of the way on the field, waving for his guys to come back out. And that looks to be the decision here to go for two after a 12-play, 75-yard drive in four minutes and 35 seconds. Definitely a, a sideline error, mental error on the sideline for Texas Tech. So you got a few candidates here. You look at Sadler, number 12. Uh, Washington again is a hot back. Mahomes has run the ball well, but of course that field shrinks. Mm -hmm. So you've got a few options. What do you think is on the mind of that guy right there, Cliff Kingsbury? Well, I think he's going to use the legs of Mahomes. And that, that's what I think they need to get him on the edge with a run pass option. Is, is I think your best chance. There goes Grant. I want to get Grant involved too. Mahomes on the run. They got the two. So Texas Tech has put this within a field goal with 4.48 to go. Now the question that's got to be on the minds of Red Raiders fans, can their defense get a stop? That will be the, the, the challenge here as we are coming down to the wire. Three-point ball game. One thousand one hundred fifty four total yards five ninety one Oklahoma State five sixty three Texas Tech you see the score in time Oklahoma State up three with four forty eight to go Cowboys get the ball back with Ray Bentley and Don Davenport I'm Dave Lamont and our ESPN crew thrilled with this one here at Jones AT&T Stadium Take a knee. We'll take a knee in the booth for a moment, and Adam and Vert going to step in and give us a breather. You take as much time as you need, Mr. Lamont. Michigan and Minnesota is starting on ESPN3, also available on the Watch ESPN app. Once your game has concluded, the entire audience will see Michigan and Minnesota. For now, Dave, back to you. Bring it home strong. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Ed, and appreciate the pep talk. We'll see what the Cowboys can do here, and we're seeing a lot of J.W. Walsh in this quarter. Yeah, and I think you're going to see more and more of that as this season winds down for Oklahoma State. I think it plays into being more physical, being able to protect the football, control the clock, all those things, and they score a lot of points when he's out there as well. But it's not as if Mason Rudolph has played poorly. No. It's just a different style. And Walsh, and that's the difference. Rudolph doesn't really run it on design. Walsh mopped the ball! But I believe Taylor recovered at number 30. We'll wait for the officials to sort it out. Yeah, I think you're right. It was a pretty clear recovery by Taylor. Second down. And a heads up play. Taylor has been out to the edge and close towards the play. And that ball comes out. You see it right there. Bounces right off of the face mask 
of De Devontae Hinton. And that is the David Gibbs, the defensive coordinator, stresses in practice all the time. He did it in Houston last year to great success, and he's having success here. Just not on that particular play to corral the football. Walsh under a lot of pressure. Hit after he threw it. Wide open. Washington. One man to beat. Turns on those Jets again. He's got another gear, and he's got another touchdown for the Cowboys. All that quarterback running set this play up. And it doesn't take a whole lot for the speedster Washington to get behind a defender. And he did so and just blew by and then stiff armed Madison to get himself into the end zone. 73 yards. The amount of explosive plays we've had in this game would blow the lid off any computer anybody can design. And that's what it gives you, Dave, the, with the ability to run the football it gets defenders moving closer to the line of scrimmage and it opens up things deep down the field well the question was answered but yes going into the break and texas tech get a stop defensively and they could not as walsh hooks up with the touchdown pass yeah and here's your matchup right up top here and you're going to see right off the bat washington gets the jump and in part it's because the corner madison had his eyes in the backfield and why not? They've been running uh, the football co consistently throughout here this second half. But I don't, I don't think anybody wants to get into a foot race with Washington. Those last 10 yards, you see that little difference yes, in his he, speed? He well, he did the same thing on that reverse yep. on the previous drive. And no safeties around. You, you mentioned those safeties walked up, were ready to stop another run, exactly. and there wasn't anybody there. And that's what having a running quarterback like J.W. Walsh in the ball game does to a defense. Puts corners on an island, and then when you have a speedster like Washington, you can win those matchups, and you can get some easy points, which is exactly what that last six were. Oklahoma State, you know, when that Tuesday night playoff conversation really gets heated up and the committee brings out their first four, Oklahoma State's on the fringe right now, ranked 12th in the AP poll. And the beginning part of their schedule may not have been the toughest, but they're trying to claw their way into the minds of the committee. Look out here with Grant, though. He's got one touchdown return today. Oh, oh him back. Well, that's a blatant one. A flag from out of the middle of the field. Well, we saw a pretty obvious block in the back. Let's see if that is what the call is. And on ESPN tonight, college football primetime presented by Hilton. First at 7 Eastern, 15th ranked Michigan. Well, there, that is the block in the back call made there. Michigan versus Minnesota at 10:30. 8th ranked Stanford versus Washington State. You can see it live on Watch ESPN if you're out and about celebrating Halloween, or maybe you're going to be hanging out of the house and you're the designated candy hander outer. Uh, then it's your job. So the block in the back will move the football back to the, the 12. 12 yeah. Yep, that is the 12. Well, I'm not going to discount Patrick Mahomes, not the way he's played today. No, not with this quick strike capabilities of this offense. See how the Cowboys approach this defensively and whether they're going to try to put pressure on Mahomes or just play coverage. Coverage. Yeah, they only rushed a three that time, and Mahomes had plenty of time to find Devin Lauderdale wide open for a nice chunk of yardage there. I don't like that much of a prevent type defense where you're going to let them catch 20 yard passes down the field. You, you have to contest those. That was a gain of 22. And now Oklahoma State, nobody putting a hand on the ground. Now they do. Just two, and they rush three again. But one of them is Ogba. And he forced Mahomes to get rid of that a little uncomfortably. And that's amazing to me. You have five guys to block three. And Agba still is able to get pressure and find a way to get after the quarterback. Another hit on the quarterback, his second of the day and his 14th of the season. Born in Lagos, Nigeria. He was the Big 12 defensive lineman of the year last year and probably the front runner this year. Yeah. You want to watch him get after it. Here the big guy is. He takes the inside route. Mahomes goes around him, and the ball is dropped at the 45-yard line. A rare mistake by Jakeem Grant. Nice underneath coverage there, too, by the linebacker, Chad Whitener. He, he just takes off and gets 
right to the route. And I don't know if he got a hand, but he certainly was involved in disrupting Grant's attempt to make that catch. That puts us into a third and ten situation here. Three to the side nearest you. Quickly, Grant. Get him out in the open. He can do a lot of damage. You saw that big move there. Dynamic runner. First down to the 45-yard line. And here's another discovery for the national audience. Shaquem Grant. He is something special. He might be the quickest guy in space I have seen. Senior from Mesquite, Texas. 178 receiving yards on 13 catches. Austin. Zach Austin on the grab picks up 11. That'll be another first down. The clock is Texas Tech's enemy, and they have just one timeout. Yeah, they're down two scores, and so that that makes it uh, that time even that much more of a premium. They go to the ground this time, and you can see coming up with Seth Jacobs, number 10, the linebacker who slowed that play down dramatically. That's a gain of two, second down at eight. Jacobs was the defensive MVP of Oklahoma State's Cactus Bowl victory. This defensive line's getting a little worn out from rushing the passer every play. Maybe not that worn out. No, <laughs> no <I laughs> because not. Jarrell Owens, number 93, with a sack, and it's Oklahoma State football. And Mahomes slipping off the field a little bit. And that was against LaRaven Clark, the best offensive lineman Texas Tech has. The big man, Vincent Taylor, gets to eat. Yum, yum. Here's your pass rush coming right around the edge up top. And it's just a speed rush. And he gets Clark's hands down and closes quickly and is able to force the fumble. And right onto the plate of Vincent Taylor. He knew what to do with it. Chomp, chomp. And you know, Oklahoma State has not had much in this half at all from Jimmy Bean. Been hurt. They got another guy there that Owens, a redshirt freshman, who is no slouch getting around the edge. And neither is Taylor, by the way. Disruptive force in the middle. Now, Oklahoma State. And they're just going to, this is an interesting little formation. They're going to start taking a knee at the 222 mark. And Texas Tech only has one timeout. Yeah, that is interesting. Well, with a two point, uh, two score lead, I should say, why not? Going to take a look at our AT&T strong performance, and it's been a day for the quarterbacks and all sorts of styles. You have Rudolph the thrower, Walsh the runner, and Mahomes a bit of both. Yes, and it's been a, a pleasure to watch each of these guys compete here this afternoon. So Mike Gundy has called for the victory formation. I'm sure they have spent oodles of time with the clocks trying to figure out when is the time to start doing this. Yeah, this is, uh, I think, smart football. You, you basically, you're going to make that clock wind down. You're going to force Tech to use their final timeout. And even though they'll have time left, they have to have two scores, Dave. And that, that's where the rub is. Timeout, Texas Tech, the third and final of the game. 30 well, seconds in line. Minnesota, how will they handle the resignation of Jerry Kill in midweek? Tracy Clays has been with Jerry Kill a long time now the interim 21 coach. Years. So he knows the way that Jerry Kill wants things done. I don't think there's going to be a lot of change in the way Minnesota approaches things. No, a few subtle wrinkles, I'm sure. And, and they're going to come out. Minnesota's going to come out fired up. I don't doubt it there's for no a doubt. second. But so is Michigan. You right. know that they automatically. Have a, they have a chip on their <laughs> shoulder as well. So it's going to be a Donnybrook. Uh, that will be a fun one. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and make a bold prediction. You All will right. not get 116 points scored in Michigan versus Minnesota. Not if they played like what 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see a lot of handoffs in that game as well. So the Cowboys are on their way to an 8 and 0 start third time in school history more importantly or as importantly 5 and 0 in the Big 12 so they get to hang with TCU and Baylor and just remind that playoff committee as we round into a very difficult November part of our schedule we're around fellas in case you need it Walsh is going to hang on to it he will not go out of bounds I think or they won't let him go back to Stillwater. We we'll show you the uh, schedule here for Oklahoma State for the rest of the season. Back loaded. Woof, is it ever? You look at it, and, and but the, the beauty of it is for the Cowboys, they have all those big boys at home. TCU is up next, then they go to Iowa State, but then Baylor and Oklahoma all come into Stillwater. That could be a bedlam game for the ages for those two teams if Oklahoma continues to hum along as they have all of a sudden started to do again after the loss in Dallas. 
Out of those Longhorns who may uh, yet have a say in who wins the Big 12 because uh, as you said earlier in the broadcast Dave uh, not a whole lot of people want to go play Texas right now. All right. Uh, neither one of us were awake for the end of the Oregon Play Arizona eight, State game. Offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. They Texas scored. Tech declined the option for a 10 second runoff. Game clock will start on the snap. Those teams combined, they needed overtimes, many of them, for 116 points. We've done it in regulation. And we're not done yet. That is the highest in college football this year, or tied for the highest in college football this year. Well, Cameron Batson is back deep to receive the punt. And this is when I tell my kicker to, to one step this thing, just get it off. Well, Siner's a good one. That's what he did. Exactly right. Line driver, Batson. He's going to try to make something happen. Did a nice return. Got about 12 extra yards out of that. But again, Texas Tech done with timeouts. Oklahoma State, if they need them, have all of theirs. We've got 45 seconds for Patrick Mahomes to pull off the new Lubbock miracle. Stranger things have happened. No doubt about it. But I think miracle is the right word in this situation. And he still looks, what's the expression, a little hitch in his giddy up there? Um, yeah, with that leg. a little gimpy yet. Yeah. With, uh, that hit he took on the fumble may have aggravated what's been an existing issue for him. But boy did he play a great game. All the quarterbacks as Ray mentioned did. 11 carries on the afternoon for Mahomes. Oh, that type of play isn't going to get it done. Dave. No I thought they were going to do a hook and ladder. I really did. Not a bad idea. That was the perfect classic position to put it in. This I don't get. You just don't have enough time to inch your way downfield no with hitch routes Cliff Kingsbury knows this I'm sure there might be a purpose to this and they're just he's got to get out of bounds number one and he did not Lauderdale well they did move the chains so the clock will stop while the chain gang gets set and then they have the option of downing it and now, uh, the clock has been stopped by the officials yeah. Apparently Goal of the play was a first down. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number six of the offense. Mm. 15 yard penalty. It's first and ten. That was number six first. Unsportsmanlike foul. The play ended in bounds. The clock will start on the ready for play. That's Devin Lauderdale who's exiting the ball game. He made the catch and then whatever he did Correction. afterwards. That was number six second. Second. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, he was out of the game. Qualified from the game. Yeah, I remember there was a number six way back. So Texas yes. Tech has had two players disqualified today, one for targeting and one for two unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. And a little push, and that was enough to set off the official to throw the flag. And did it right in front of him. Yeah, that's not a good, not a smart play. I, I agree with the call. That frustration gets the best. Oh, line. That's there we go. Receiver wasn't even paying attention. We've had an offensive touchdown. We've had two special teams touchdowns, and now a pick six. And now we have the highest scoring game in college football this season, and the 36th non-offensive touchdown for Mike Gundy's team since 2010. And the air kind of went out of this Texas Tech football team, and. You got to give Oklahoma State all kinds of credit because all they've done this year is just find ways to win and the competition will get much stiffer in the final month of the season for Mike Gundy's outfit. <laughs> 70. If this extra point goes through unbelievable. Was it me or did the receiver look like he wasn't even looking for the football. I think you're right on that. But the, the corner was, that's for sure. And <laughs> here he is right down here, and they don't come much easier than this. He knows he's got two guys back over the top. Mahomes stares it down the whole way. And that's that's a pretty good easy pick six. You see Pat Mahomes is just watching that whole deal. He wants to get a quick throw and have his guy get out of bounds. The receiver not on the same page. And that leads Ramon Richards to make a little house call. Well, he had three interceptions last year as a freshman. He's got two this year, and that one memorable. How about that? Uh, those are some crooked numbers up there, Dave. 
70 Oklahoma State puts on the board 123 total and the fact that we've had a wide variety of touchdowns Texas Tech actually exceeded their total yards average for the year in this game and points and Oklahoma State blew it out of the water normally 480 now 662 so Texas Tech still hoping to get bowl eligibility which would be a big deal for them we're over a mile in offense here today yep they still have to go to Morgantown next week, then they'll host Kansas State, and then they only have one game after that the rest of the season, Thanksgiving weekend, when they go to Austin to take on the Longhorns. Their schedule isn't back, is more front-loaded than back, or middle-loaded, uh, to actually finish two of the last few weeks of the season with buys. They got to get one more victory as Texas Tech to become bowl eligible, and I yep. think they consider that a success. Morgantown, never easy. I know West Virginia has not won in the Big 12 yet this year, but never, never easy. Texas Tech led with 4.09 to go in the fourth quarter, 45 to 42. 4.09 to go in the fourth quarter. Look at our score. Justin Stockton will end the ball game. Our final score is Oklahoma State, and there's a flag down. I got to think. They're telling, well, you know what? The officials are saying everybody get off the field. The back judge is trying to wave everybody. They're telling everybody get off the field. We do have a well, flag. Well, if it's a defensive foul. Personal foul, face mask, number 10. Yep, defense. game's not. The penalty is declined. Okay. That's the end of the ball game. There you go. Final score, Oklahoma State 70, Texas Tech 53, 15th ranked Michigan and Minnesota coming up. For Ray Bentley, Don Davenport, our entire crew, I'm Dave Lamont saying stay still water strong and so long from Lubbock.